Halo. Ni men kan dao wo ma? Ke kan dao de screen ma? Gan gan wo struggle liao yi xia xia yin wei wo de na ge YouTube start bu dao live ro hou yi gan jiu. Hello everyone. Hello everyone. So uh today's class will be conducted in English. So uh if anyone here needs me to explain in Mandarin for a certain things, also can let me know. I can you know translate it into Mandarin since I have my Mandarin class and English class students joining the live. So you guys can get ready according to my screen here. I've mentioned uh, that you will need to prepare your calculator, your line papers, which is test pad, and also your highlighters. So uh, because the highlighters, right, you have more colors, it will be better. Because for Bab 7, we need to highlight like two things. Uh, for Club and Persatuan as well, we will be highlighting two as well. So you would probably need about two colors if it's possible. So... um. My chat here will be slightly delayed, including my screen as well. So if um you ask me some questions, I will wait until it comes out. Only I will reply to you. So please don't think that I'm ignoring you. It's just that it's delayed, lah. Okay. All right. So hi guys, hi guys. You guys can can say hi to me so I know who's here. <laughs> Oh yeah, I have also created a poll on my live chat. So, uh, I wanted you guys to vote whether you feel like Bab Six or Bab Seven is harder. So most of you have chosen Bab Six, Club and Persatuan, which not not surprised for me. I feel like yes, also Bab Six is harder. But uh, I'm a bit shocked also that most students find Bab Seven is hard. So later on, we'll be covering Bab Seven. So if there's any questions you would like to ask, you can just type it at the chat in advance, so I can answer you by the time when I'm discussing the Bab Seven question. All right. So hi guys, hi guys. Let's uh wait a little bit more before I start the class. So I think there are still people coming in. Uh, there might be some late comments. So uh, by the way, if your friends are interested to join the live session, you can also share the link to them because it's you know free to join. Anyone is welcome, and I'll be discussing Bab Six and Bab Seven according to the topic here, lah. Okay. Now my uh PDF file is actually very simple, just two questions, because uh I will be using my own way to explain. I will be writing it on a piece of paper, so you guys can get ready with your papers as well. So later, whatever that I'm writing down, you all can also copy, lah. Okay. All right. So are you guys ready? Are you guys ready for the class? Now, um, this session should be until nine thirty. Okay, if I can able to cover finish, but if let's say it's a bit delayed, I am slow, then it might be until ten o'clock or maybe even later. So I there's no time frame for this live session. So I will try my best to cover both the questions in full. So if you are feeling uh tired already halfway through, you feel like okay, I wanna watch it back later on, then you can also leave halfway through. It's totally fine with me. Just make sure that you spend some time to watch back lah. If you need the chapter, because I'll be covering about six first, only to about seven. All right. Um, is it that you guys cannot chat? Uh, type on chat. Yeah, I'm not really sure. Is there anything wrong with my chat box? Oh, okay. So it's now connected. Oh, okay. You guys were talking to me, <laughs> so I didn't really see your chats because mine was like disconnected. All right, all right. Hi, hi guys, hi guys. <laughs> <laughs> I only see your messages now. I was like thinking, mm, why nobody respond to me? So weird. Okay, so uh, since that you guys are ready, then let's begin. All right. So for today, we'll be doing Club and Persatuan. Okay. So have you guys gotten ready with your calculator? Because we'll be using it later on. So for Club and Persatuan, right? I have chosen this question, which is a uh, 2019 Johor Batu Pahat. Now the question is not super hard. I would say it's moderate. We have seen much worse question before, but then since it's a live class, I want you guys to be able to understand the most basic parts of Bab Six. So I will be taking this question not too hard, not too easy. So at least you still get to know uh, what are your steps are. Okay. So um, this is the example question. 
All right, this is the example question. We are be uh, we will be doing this Johor question, and also for part seven, we will be doing two thousand twenty Malacca set. So that you know, it's for later. So let's begin from part six first. Now I have prepared my paper, okay, with my logo, <laughs> fancy a little bit. So um, let's begin with writing. Okay, so for cut and pasta, there are a few things that you need to understand. Okay, mainly. The first thing is the structure of the question. So what are they gonna ask for during box six question? Now I will put them into point form A, B, C, D, E like that. Okay. So for part A, okay, for part A, they will usually ask for account you run. Account you run. So uh, whether or not they will be writing the Ali word at the back actually doesn't really matter lah because you run account you run you run Ali is the same thing. So I will just put it in the full version. You run Ali in case y'all didn't know about it. Now be aware that your account you run Ali ah cannot put anything that is you run pertandingan or you run masuk because they are of a different category. So how do we say it's different lah? Because you run Ali is the consistent one. Every month your members will pay. Okay, every month your members will pay. So it means every year we will have a certain amount received. Now if you say you run masuk. You run masuk is known as registration fee. So I'm gonna put it by the side. You run masuk. You run masuk is registration fee for joining the club. Okay. While for you run pertandingan, you run pertandingan. Is meant for what? Yeah, it's also a registration fee, but the sake of pertandingan. Okay, it's also a registration fee, but meant for pertandingan. So you see, this too, right? Is that if I don't have any new members, will I receive Yuran Masuk? I would. If I don't have pertandingan, will I receive Yuran Pertandingan? I will also not receive it. So that's why, right? This too, I cannot put into account Yuran Ali. So here is only the one. That is called as you run. That's all. Okay. Now for part A, they will ask for this one. You will prepare it in ledger form. So continue for part B. For part B, they will ask you to prepare account kawalan or account perdagangan. So I would say eh, sometimes right the question will completely not ask for account kawalan. Then you all will have to do it by yourself. So I will like you know slot it at the center lah. Suppose right part B usually will be straight into account perdagangan already. Account perdagangan. So the step before of account perdagangan is that you must do account kawalan. Account kawalan. All right. Now we will recap a little bit on uh why is that we need to use account kawalan? It's because account perdagangan, right, is the place where you do jualan, tola, cost jualan. Now inside cost jualan, we will be seeing inventory hour. You will have belian. All right, and then you will minus inventory akhir. So this is like the very normal account perdagangan format, isn't it? Okay. So for jualan and belian, that's the one that you will need kawalan. Okay. So why account kawalan helps you to find jualan credit, belian credit. Now the reason why I didn't put uh done is because jualan. And belian credit is not always needed. It depends on the question whether they give you account belong terima and account belong bayar or not. If they do give you these two types, then of course go ahead and find your jualan credit, find your belian credit. But what if if they just give you account belong terima inside the question? Means that there is no belian credit. You just need to help them create account kawalan belong terima so that you can search for. Jualan credit, so that is the method for it, lah. Okay, so once you have found the jualan credit, you will jumlahkan dengan jualan secara tunai, which you can find from the question itself. That one usually don't have to calculate, lah. Just take from there the question and add it together. You will form your jualan meant for account perdagangan. Now be aware, yeah. Uh, this chapter right is club dan persatuan. So we don't really want to earn money from selling or buying. So this uh profit right is not gonna be seen inside box six. We won't see the word untung kasa, rugi kasa, or even untung berse, rugi berse. Instead, if you wanna say untung. It will be meant for a specific activity, so depends on whether your club have you know side business or not. So example given, okay, we are a badminton club, okay, badminton club. 
So for a badminton club, right, we will be having activities like almost every week. So the main concern is when my club members come for badminton, what if they forgot to bring their racket, okay? Or maybe their racket spoiled already halfway through. So they want to buy a new racket, right? So I want to provide this convenience for them. So we open a kedai, peralatan, sukat. Okay, kedai peralatan sukat. So when I open a kedai, now this is not the main intention of having club dan persatuan ma. I don't aim to just sell all the peralatan sukan, but instead is for convenience. So now that I have a kedai peralatan sukan, it will let my ahli ahli, which is my members, to buy stuff from here. Now as they buy, means it's a sale for me lor. I will have jualan. And of course, before I can sell the stuffs, I need to get supplies, right? Which what we call as berlian of the peralatan sukan or we barang yaga lah, okay? So when you have jualan berlian, there will ought to be untung ataupun rugi. So it's not avoidable already because of having kedai peralatan sukan. So from here, account perdagangan, we will focus on what is the activity sampingan. So example, as I mentioned just now, I'm opening kedai peralatan sukan. So my account perdagangan is meant for that purpose. Kedai peralatan sukan. And what is the answer that I want to find from this account perdagangan here? We are aiming to find untung ataupun rugi kedai peralatan sukan. So later on, right, the highlighters that I ask you all to prepare yeah, is mainly for this account perdagangan purpose because you will look for all the keywords that is related to the activity something at, which is the shop right now. So if it's kedai peralatan sukan, we will look for anything that is kedai peralatan sukan inside the question, highlight them and put them into your account perdagangan later on. So this is for your part B lah. Alright, now continue. After we have done for part B, account perdagangan, the next step they will ask for is our account pendapatan dan, yeah, sorry, dan perbelanjaan. So actually, right, they have a, a old name one. This account pendapatan dan perbelanjaan, if you say in Minikan Tunggal, right, it's actually our account Untung Rugi. So if you have forgotten what is account Untung Rugi, right? Account UR is actually the step after your account perdagangan. So uh, usually we find AKP, account perdagangan, you get Untung ataupun Rugi Kasab. And then you continue, you have plus hasil, tolak belanja, you get Untung ataupun Rugi Berse. So actually the account Untung Rugi uh, is exactly this step. Where you take your Untung Kasab, to add with hasil minus belanja. So now uh, we change into the form of club dan persatuan. We no longer have kasa berse these kind of terms. So they are not actually connected to each other anymore. They will be separated. Okay. So what is the purpose of account pendapatan dan perbelanjaan? So exactly, we will just be doing hasil tolak belanja. So I will use the usual symbol for them. Pendapatan stands for our hasil. So I put the H symbol. H circle up, while for perbelanjaan stands for our usual belanja, B circle. So later on, we will just aim to take hasil tolak belanja. So you will get your answer into another name called as lebihan ataupun kurangan. So the logic is because we are not a profit organization. We Guys, so sorry. I was thinking that maybe I use my data, it will be, it will be better. But turns out that it's not better. <laughs> it got me so lag instead. Hold on, yeah, guys. It's all good right now? Really? <laughs> but I'm trying to connect my screen though. Like, my, my screen is not connecting right now. Wait, yeah, guys. So sorry, please be patient with me. <laughs> Is this a routine? Yeah. <laughs> my usual class students will know my struggle, okay? Every time, every time it will lag when I teach, okay? I think my data has something to do with me. Just like... Uh. <laughs> hold on, yeah, hold on.
can see my screen now. <laughs> Alright, now this is why uh, my class might be delayed because of my data. Okay, so let's continue. Alright, let's continue. Um, I was talking halfway about the Lebihan and Kurangan. So you all just remember because we are club dan bersatan. So no kasa, no berseh. You cannot call them untung or rugi. That's why uh, we will change the name to Lebihan ataupun Kurangan. Lah. So this is where you do your pendapatan dan perbelanjaan. The original name was account untung rugi. So we will use back the usual symbol you use for account untung rugi, the H symbol and the B symbol. But one thing yeah, that you have to take note of is that behind of the pendapatan and the perbelanjaan word, there must be a hasil. Okay, there must be a hasil. So why is it that there must be a hasil? Yeah, it's because in our chapter itself, we have this topic, learning about account pendapatan dan perbelanjaan. Lah. So pendapatan is a new name for our usual hasil. Perbelanjaan is the new name for belanja, right? So what is the purpose of them changing the name of hasil and the belanja? It's because they want to take the word hasil to become a type of category. Okay, so uh, those that just recently attended my class should be understanding this because I already covered this before in class. But we repeat it again, making sure that you understand. Okay, you understand. So for pendapatan, pendapatan, and perbelanjaan, we have dual genes of them. Okay, first one is the hasil type. First one is the hasil type. So, uh, the meaning of pendapatan hasil and perbelanjaan hasil, right? Hasil stands for standard operation. So, anything that is related to the operating of my club dan persatuan, we will use the word hasil at the back. So, that's why, right, we are using the normal symbol for it. Pendapatan hasil, B circle. Perbelanjaan, eh, sorry, B circle lah. H circle, sorry, I say wrongly. H circle, while perbelanjaan hasil, it will be B circle. So this is how the hasil grouping will work. So I will give you guys example of what type of pendapatan and perbelanjaan we have. So since that this is a you uh, club dan persatuan, so our profit right the hasil uh, will be lesser types compared to the previous you know chapters. So what we have is new thing, you run Ali. Okay, we will have you run Ali. I zoom in a little bit there so you guys can see clearer. You run Ali, and also we will have you run. Pertandingan. You run pertandingan. Now, all this that we receive, right, is meant for the operation of our club and persatuan. Ma. Now, mainly if you ask me, why do I collect club fees? Eh? Eh, school also never collect one. Because school uh, is, you know, uh, actually sponsored with by government. Ma. But now, if I'm a private club, cl uh, badminton club like that, all the money uh, contributed by myself, I will feel very imbalanced. Also, I need to get it from my club members. You want to use my facility, you want to join the events, then of course you have to pay for it, right? So we will have you run lah, as the main income for the whole club member satan. So we can have more activities for you guys. Alright, so you run Ali, you run Pertandingan. Other than that, you might also have uh, like those Sewa. Sewa like example what? Sewa Locker. Because you see, uh, as a sports club, right, we might need to have a place for my members to store their important stuff, like you say, handphone uh, or their wallet. Uh, these are very expensive ones. So make sure that it's kept safely. We will prepare a locker for them so they can store their items. So this sewa locker, right, will also become an income for the club dan persatuan laki. So these are the journeys pendapatan. Now, of course, there will be more, but I don't want to mention them first because uh, depends on question one. So these are the three that you might see. Okay, so I add on one more. Is Yuran Maso. Yuran Maso. Later on, I'll tell you guys why is it in red color and why is there like star, lah, okay? But you wear maso is under pendapatan hasil. Okay, then we move on to perbelanjaan. Here, I'll say not really new stuff or is, you know, old stuff like what? Uh, kada bayaran. Okay, we have kada bayaran. Of course, you have to pay for bill IA, bill electric, right? So you're still using a place. So you got to pay for them. And also maybe you, you, you rent the location, say what? What else? Uh, we might have insurance for the club insurance and also maybe to have some susut nilai 
So susun nila what if your club dan pesatuan is using uh, staff like kenderaan or to fetch your club members, uh, maybe you have alatan pejabat for the office area. Now, of course, uh, you say club wo, why got office not? Also got ma. You see, you go to badminton club, right? Okay, uh, badminton court uh, also got office ma for you to you know receive money and stuff like that. So all this is possible, guys. Don't feel that it's weird. Any asset bukan semasa got SN, then it's under perbelanjaan hasil already. So any types of SN put ABS okay. Now these are the normal types. Pendapatan perbelanjaan hasil. For model type, okay, for model type, we also have two, bah, pendapatan and perbelanjaan. Pendapatan and perbelanjaan. Then this one, right, I wouldn't put it as B symbol or H symbol anymore. No symbols for it. We would usually just put PKK on. So which one is it that I will label? Yeah? The one that I will label PKK on is pendapatan model. Now first thing is you need to understand the classificasi of model. Model itself is considered EP, right? So means that this pendapatan, the income, is gonna relate to your equity per minute. And for the per belanjaan, it will also affect your equity per minute. So this thing uh, goes back to your basic of form 4. You remember this formula A, I uh, sorry, I should put it down there. Okay. A equals to L plus EP. Okay, A equals to L plus EP. So basically how it affects is that when I receive a certain money, it will make my EP increase. So why? Because maybe asset berdamba. Okay, so then it's balanced. Uh. Then another case is where I have perbelanjaan, perbelanjaan of related to EP. Uh, okay, means it will make my model increase or decrease. Uh. Even stay the same is also possible. Like how we used to do our bak tu persamaan perekanan in form 4. Okay, in form 4. When we buy asset with asset. Okay, so what's the meaning of buy asset with asset? Okay, I'm buying kenderaan. But the money that I use is from bank. So you see, yeah, kenderaan akan bertambah, but bank akan berkurang. Is there any difference in terms of the number? Don't have. Because if I buy 10,000 worth of car, my bank also going to minus 10,000. So in the end, it balances off zero. So my EP is not affected, but in a way, it also belongs to the PKK. So the meaning of model, right, is to tell you that these two things are meant to be applied to PKK, not to your normal account, pendapatan dan perbelanjaan. Okay, yeah? so this is the difference. Now, I'll give you guys some example for pendapatan model. So we have example like derma has. Okay, now the word has uh, stands for special, okay, so special case or a main purpose like membina gelangga, build a new cot. So any, uh, you see the word membina, right, okay, bina, okay, bina, or they say a, uh, something like renovation also can, okay, but mainly like, they will tell you a specific activity, the me, Membina Gelangga. Now, there's one word uh, that you cannot take to be under the Mahas. That is when they say penyelenggaraan. Okay, now if it's penyelenggaraan, it's under here. Perbelanjaan hasil. Now, what's the meaning of penyelenggaraan? I'm not sure whether... Any one of you know about the meaning or not, but penyelenggaraan stands for servicing. Okay, servicing. Service. So why is it under hasil? Because service uh, is not something that will affect your asset or your EP. Because when I service, the price of the ABS will remain the same. Okay, just that I, I fixed it, ma, make sure that it's still working. But if you say you're going to bina a whole new ABS, then that's a different case already. Now, of course, it will make your model increases. So, pendapatan here, right, it's not that I legit built the gelanggang already, but I am preparing to build it so I will collect money from all my club members in the way of derma donation. Okay, so this is one of the examples. And another one is going to be your yuran masuk. Yuran masuk. 
So just now I put a star at the pendapatan hasil area, isn't it? Uran maso. So there's two places that you can put for your uran maso. But how are you gonna decide when to put pendapatan hasil? When to put pendapatan model leh? So for uran maso, if they say the angka sebagai pendapatan model. If they do this, then yes, Uran Maso you put at PKK. But if they didn't say anything about the Uran Maso, they just put it in the question without a maklumat tambahan telling you that the anggap sebagai pendapatan model, then you don't care about it. Just put it as normal hasil will do. So the most times uh, students will get confused is where the Uran Maso is. Uh. So you just check for the maklumat tambahan. They never say anything, then Uran Maso just a regular hasil because it's still Uran, right? Just that it's a registration fee, a temporary stuff. Okay, so for Perbelanjaan model. How is perbelanjaan model presented to us? Yeah, perbelanjaan model is beli ABS baharu. Membeli ABS baharu. So perbelanjaan model, right? You cannot see the steps one. There is no new term for it. Instead, you will have to just add it into ABS. So the step. Step means one, okay? The only one step is to tambah ABS sahaja. Okay, so how are you going to know whether there's Burbalanja and model? You will find it from your buku tonight. So the question, right, will prepare you with the BT, buku tonight, or otherwise known as account penerimaan dan pembayaran. Lah, okay, so this buku tonight will show where your money comes in and money goes out, plus, minus like that. So you will have to look at the negative side okay look at the negative side of your book tonight if they did wrote kenderaan 50,000 or anything abs i put perabot 7,000 what are you gonna do you are gonna Add these two things into your ABS and that's it. So why is it that you only need to do one step? Leh? Because the question already helped you do one of the catatan buku step, which is inside buku tonight, they already put on the credit side. So what you have to do for your ABS? Just put to the debit. Lah. But instead of debit, because we don't open leisure for them, lah. debit for ABS stands for positive. So we will add it into ABS and your penda, uh, per belanjaan model step is finished already. Uh, penyelenggaraan will not increase the nilai of ABS. Yes, correct. Penyelenggaraan is just fixing. As I said, it's called service. Okay, service or fixing. But if we say mengubah suai, yes, correct. Ubah suai then will uh, increase the nilai. Why? Because ubah suai stands for renovation. So as you renovate an old house to become new house, uh, obviously the value will change, right? I can't still sell the same. So nobody will renovate the house already. So ubah suai will cause your pen, uh, will cause it to be pendapatan model. Okay, so I put it here also, uh, ubah suai. If you see this word, lah, then it's considered pendapatan model. Alright, so I finished explaining about the journeys of pendapatan and perbelanjaan already. So we have two types. So the groups are hasil group and also model group. So just remember the hasil group is the usual belanja dengan hasil. And what for model group is meant for PKK. So then these two are the ones we want at your part C. Alright, so part C, finished talking about it already. Now, lastly, we come to part D, is going to be PKK. Now, this PKK, right, I would say you can expect it to be almost always this pattern, that they will have a bracket by the side saying, menunjukkan, menunjukkan, bahagian, dana terkumpul sahaja. Menunjukkan bahagian dana terkumpul sahaja. 
So if they say this, uh, means what? Good news for you. We don't have to do the entire PKK. So you think about it. Uh, the long version of PKK will cost you so much time because you need to start from ABS. Asset bukan semasa, someone need to minus S and T, right? And then further on, you need to find model curvature from them. For now, uh, if they say only to menunjukkan bahagian dana terkumpul sahaja, then it's going to save you so much time because the dana terkumpul term stands for EP. Dana Tegumpu stands for equity pemilik. So how are you supposed to show them the dana tegumpu sahaja leh? So the equity permit now has changed in name ah. So we don't call them EP. But I will still mention it as EP so that you can easily understand what I'm talking about. So the new term EP is called dana tegumpu. But not just that EP became dana tegumpu, our model word also changed to dana tegumpu already. So what's the reason for that yeah? Because now we are club dan persatuan. Nobody is our permit. Okay, everybody is equal. We are all ahli ahli club sahaja. So, eh, of course, the monies that we collected from all the club members, we should call them dana tegumpu, funds collected, instead of, you say, model. Model is from one person or even pekongsi pekongsi. So, I will write for you guys all the terms that are changing. EP will now change into dana tegumpu. Okay, EP will now change to Dana Tegumpu. Not only that, model also changed to Dana Tegumpu. So at the Dana Tegumpu section, which is the EP area, you will see a lot of types of Dana Tegumpu happening. Okay, what is the uh, format? Yeah, okay, so I'll just put it here because it's very short. The format will be to start from Dana Tegumpu. Dana Tegumpu, this is the title. The, the usual equity permit we have. Lah. And then underneath of it, then we will start with Dana Tegumpu Awal. Dana Tegumpu Awal. So what is this? Yeah, okay, I put by the side. I use the purple color means it's the usual name we see. Lah. This is EP. This is Model Awal. Okay, Model Awal. And then we're going to do plus Lebihan. And also, one more is to see whether we have any pendapatan model or not. So, if you have pendapatan model, which is this one here, we said must put at PKK, right? So, I will copy lah. Let's say we're having a derma bina gelanga. Okay, derma bina gelanga. So, I'll put that below of the lebihan. Derma bina gelanga. Put it underneath. Then we will find our final answer to be dana tegumpu akhir. We will find it to be dana tegumpu akhir. So th that's all, okay? Our format for dana tegumpu is just this simple because you will not see any ambilan anymore. So what is the dana tegumpu akhir? Uh, this is actually model akhir. So if you want to really understand what is the, 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 the Derma Bina Gelanggang standing for, right? I would say Derma Bina Gelanggang is kind of like our model tambahan. The usual ones that we see in our EP section. Lah. So more or less the same thing. So Lebehan is the usual Untung ataupun Rugi Bersi. Now one thing that you have to take note of uh, is if our Lebehan does not appear we found kurangan instead then how are you supposed to arrange them all over again i say because lebihan is positive so of course i can put derma bina gelanggang underneath of it but what if we have a kurangan instead so this is how it's gonna look like we will put dana tekumpu awal plus derma bina gelanggang plus derma bina gelanggang minus kurangan minus kurangan so you get dana tekumpu akhir so this is the case if you get kurangan lah, of course if you get kurangan then it would be uh, to plus first only to minus because you know when you do maths as well you also plus first only to minus ma. so that is the arrangement for our equity permit section which is now called as dana tekumpu already Okay, so guys, I have already uh, pretty much finished with the explanation for our uh, anda dikehendaki, which is what the questions will ask for. A, B, C, D, 
usually it's these four parts but if they want it to be slightly longer then maybe they will request for you to open account kaolan and give you marks for it so maybe you will have until part e okay so at the center of a and b they add on one more step for you all right so this is the uh, explanation for anna diga nagi moving on i will talking about i will be talking about the steps which is uh total to three steps three main steps so let's move on to the bottom uh, continue to talk about the langkah Now, the langkah, right, actually, is set by me. It's not necessary for you to follow through all the time. If you have your way to do it, now, of course, it's best. But if you have no idea where to start your question from, then you can follow my langkah because I think it's more organized. All right, so the first step, first langkah, is that we're going to be doing dana tekumpu awal. Okay, we will be doing dana tekumpu awal. You see, uh, the importance of this dana te kumpu awal is like top tier. You know why? Because by the end of the question, part D, they will ask for PKK. But also, you can work smart. What if the question only stop at part C? They don't want PKK. Then do you need to do this first step? Say, don't waste your time, law. You need to read the question first, ma. Question didn't ask for it, then why you waste time going calculate? Don't do your first step. So you can change according to what the question want. Can I understand? Okay, so now... For our first step, langkah satu, dana terkumpul awal is the usual way of finding your model by taking asset tolak liability. So which section are you get your asset? Are you gonna get your asset and liability from? You will get it from the baki bb area. So baki bb is always the first January or first of any month that you see inside the question with the full list of asset and liability. So you just do your plus minus over there lah. Now, there's no need for you to show them your process. You just need to use what? Your calculators. So, let's say we have um, asset, uh, we have liability, we have asset again. So, what you do is plus, minus, plus. So, you put symbols by the side of the numbers. So, you can just directly get your dana te kumpu awal. There's no need for you to write out the entire process. Okay, save time. So, this is for step one. Continue, step number two. Step two is going to be your bank. So we are going to try to find bank's baki HP. Yeah? Now, this is for preparation of your PKK. If the penyata kedudukan kewangan only requests for bahagian dana terkumpul sahaja, then you can avoid no need, asset, and liability. Okay, if the question only asks for bahagian dana terkumpul sahaja, then what's the point of you finding all the asset and liability by the uh, akhir tahun when you're not going to even use it? So the baki HP here for the bank, right, can also be ignored if they did not ask for asset and liability, the full version. They only want dana terkumpul, which is EP, then we will skip it already. Okay, now to find bank's baki HP, uh, you will use the entire account penerimaan dan pembayaran to do so. By what? By taking, by taking the baki BB of bank tambah dengan the entire penerimaan section. So our penerimaan side, right, is the debit side, lor. Okay, debit. Now sometimes, right, they wouldn't give you sides. They go, don't give you the T shape. So what you do? You search for where they write penerimaan. You take the entire section, add it together with your baki BB, and after that, you will minus your pembayaran, which is on the credit side. Alright, now this answer that you found uh, later on will be used as asset semasa for your PKK. So the reason why I wanted you guys to find out these two first is because they cannot be selepas pelarasan. These two things, the answers must be sebelum pelarasan. So to avoid you uh, taking the wrong set of you know, numbers, right? So we want to make sure it's the first step and the second step. Lah. Okay, so first, second step done already. Now, to the last step before you can officially do your account you run, your account perdagangan, we will be preparing for pelarasan. So, of course, what is a question without pelarasan, right? All our Form 5 chapters have pelarasan one. So, yes, we're going to start with that. Now, pelarasan got two sections. Just remember that you don't miss out any of the section that I mentioned here. Yeah. Total is two. Okay. The first section is what I call as the baki area. Okay, what I call as the Baki area. So, of course, not just the BB, not just the Baki HP, but both of them. So, if you guys ever see in the Baki area, having these words, okay, having these words, 
I call it the gura, the lobby. Okay, the gura, the lobby. As n. Okay, now the the gura, the lobby examples will be prabaya, belum baya, belum terima. Belum terperoleh. Now, guys, I I didn't intend to you know follow according to where I put I prabaya under the ground. No, no, no. It's just example. So prabaya obviously is under the lebe lah. Okay, belum baya is the ground, and then yeah, go on. So we have these four sets, but you all be cautious because A B T, A B B. These two are not considered as the belarasan type, except for those that are at the front with any belanja or hasil name, such as. Kadar bayaran belum bayar. Okay, then this is the belarasan you have to do. So what are you gonna do with it, lah? Now you think about the usual way. Yeah, when we do our tegurang ataupun telebe, we will be doing tegurang plus telebe minus. But that is for year end, right? Then what if they have a baki bb, which is starting of the year? How are you supposed to do the adjustment, lah? Okay, so you put this by the side. Okay, you put this by the side. We will have our first January, thirty first December this way, right? So meaning to say, this is the baki bb, this is the baki hp. Alright, now I'm just gonna put kurang and lebe by the side for you all to see the comparison. Kurang, lebe. If it's hp, now this is the usual way, okay? Usual way that we do it. So how? Okay, if it's kurang, too little. Plus, lebih, too much, minus. Okay, so this one should be easy, right? Plus, minus only. But what about the front? Okay, can I just teacher? I wanna do plus and minus also for the front. But you think about it, yeah. In Malaysia, do you ever see BB and HB being on the same side for a single classification? Except, okay, having it like this. No ma, our baki BB and baki HB is always sitting on the opposite direction. Where here comes our opposite side being a positive or a negative. So for asset right, positive is debit side, negative is credit side. So you see ah, when I say I want to plus for the HB means that the front is going to be minus because they cannot be on the same side. Means that symbol also. Different. Okay, so this is the concept of it, lah. That's why now this cannot plus plus minus minus. Ah, must be minus plus plus minus. Different combination. Like this. Okay. So once you get the hang of this run, right? Any time when they give you BB and HB side by side, you can just decide for the year end. Then the front just put the the valid type of symbol will do, lah. So for the grand delay, you will apply this method. Now next up, we talk about the susut nilai. The S N right, the only formula will be coming out for your baki area is what we call as penilaian semula. Penilaian semula. So what is penilaian semula? Uh, nilai means value. Semula all over again. So we are trying to calculate it all over again from the beginning. So that's why you will have the beginning. Till the end, which involves your baki bb and baki hp, so that it will be like this: baki bb, okay, plus beli minus jual minus hp. All right. Now, uh, how are we gonna know, teacher? Hey, when are we gonna know whether this penilaian semula or not? Then it depends whether the baki bb and hp got any difference. So I give you guys an example. Okay, I give you guys an example. Since I'll be having a slight delay, I will ask first, and then I wait for y'all to answer me. Ah, uh, y'all see whether you know which one got penilaian semula or not. Okay, so here we have kenderaan, we have perabot. There are two types of ABS inside the baki area. And now my kenderaan started with seventy thousand, ended with seventy thousand. While my perabot started with eight thousand, ended with nine thousand seven hundred. So can you guys tell me which one, which one of them is suspicious? Which we think that eh, there is gonna be a penilaian semula. There is gonna be having a penilaian semula step for me to do. Okay, which one is with the uh, SN? Okay, can you guys tell? We have our kenderaan and we have our perawat. Which one is it that you need to do penilaian semula? 
<laughs> okay, I already have an answer there. Anyone else want to try? Maybe, maybe it's wrong name. You guys also try, right? Okay, so Kanera An and Parabot is the answer. Parabot, yes. Why is that? Because if you want to compare, how can you tell that there is Susut Nilai when the front and back is the same there? So unless, unless the front and the back is different. So we will have Vanilla and Sumerola. But maybe it sounds a bit weird because, hey teacher, didn't this number grow bigger? How come got Susut Nilai one? Okay, then we gotta investigate further already. So we come back to this buku uh, dunai here, okay? You see how the Perbelanjaan model is, right? I said, if it's a Perbelanjaan model, your task is to tambah ke dalam aset bukan semasa sahaja, which actually will be used for the penilaian semula step. That's why there is appearing inside the buku dunai, okay? So now I'm going to give you guys the example for Parabot because just now the number is a bit weird, lah, okay? So I change it there. I put by the side. A small one will do. No need to be so big. Ah. Just a small buku tonight. Then you all put it on the credit side. Credit side, negative. Ah, where my money goes out. There is a Parabot. I put 2,000. Okay, I put 2,000. So guys, what am I supposed to do if uh, we said that this is a Perbelanjaan model? What am I supposed to do if I said that this is a perbelanjaan model? According to my explanation above, perbelanjaan model only got one step to do, which is to plus what? Can you guys uh, recall what I said just now? If it's a perbelanjaan model, should I plus what? Okay, which place is going to get affected? So of course, we're talking about parabot here, right? <laughs> okay, we're talking about parabot here. You buy parabot. Parabot, of course, will increase, isn't it? Okay, so since that parabot will increase, how are you going to adjust it? We will use the baki area to adjust, which is not the back, no, no, but the front. Okay, now usually, right, when in Form 4, we do pelarasan, la, you will have uh, affected the baki HP. But then now, in this case, because it's a type of penilaian similar, so we don't change the back Instead, we will change the front. Because based on Form 4, we talk about Princip Cost. Okay, Princip Cost. Means that no matter what is the current price, we will record back the old amount. Original amount to be recorded even after having susut nilai okay so we said the, the one that will affect your abs uh, is truly the s and t not the sn lah. but without sn you wouldn't have s and t right so the concept is like that lah, okay you see uh, why is that in our uh, answering every time pkk the only thing that increases in value uh, is the susut nilai the kumpu we will increase the value so it can be minus out from my cost right is because i want to keep the original amount so if you see the eight thousand and the nine thousand seven hundred uh, Obviously, 9,700 is not the original already. Let's assume that, okay, la, they helped me add already, but it's not the true amount. So how am I going to check what is the original amount? After I bought my parabola, we will take the starting figure plus with the burly, okay, burly parabola, right? I'll take it, the 2,000. You add it together with your 8,000. Now, when you add it together, what is the answer you will get? 8,000 plus 2,000 uh, is actually 10,000. Now, I will want you all to straight away replace the 9,700 with 10,000. You know what? Because I need the cost. I don't need this 9,700. What is the 9,700? Actually, this one here is our Nilai Buku. So why they must give you Nilai Buku so you can find SN Lab? Because in your PKK, in your PKK, what is the arrangement of your RM column? We will start from cost, continue with S and T, only to Nilai Buku. So you see, isn't it that trying to ask you to find S and T? So they don't want to give you S and T, they give you the cost and the Nilai Buku. So you just need to swap the places, becomes cost dollar Nilai Buku, you will get your Susut Nilai dan Susut Nilai Tegumpu. So penilaian similar overall is like this. Okay? So we we'll take the original Baki BB, tambah dengan Berlian ABS, tolak 
uh, Baki HB, which is the Nilai Buku. So you will get your Susut Nilai, not the 10,000, but it's 10,000 compared to 9,700. Answer 300 Susut Nilai. Okay, so if you guys want me to arrange properly for you, right, I put it over here, yeah, underneath of the Penilayan Samula formula, it will be starting from 8,000 for Baki BB, okay, we tambah Berlian ABS, this in a bracket, because they are my costs. Tola, no draw, never mind, don't have draw, never mind, we will just keep it, minus the HP, which is 9,700. This is our nilai buku. So equals to 300 S S N per Okay, so every time it's just these two types of Tekurang Telebe and also SN Penilaian Semula. Other than that, right, I'll say maybe you all might see Alat Tulis. But Alat Tulis is also the same case of Penilaian Semula. You just need to take the Baki BB, tambah dengan Berlian, tolak HP will do. So usually, Jualan is very rare to have come out. Lah. So they will only ask for Berlian for you to do the Susut Nilai. Okay, so that's it for the Baki area. Now moving on, we go on to our... Normal maklumat tambahan area. Maklumat tambahan. So this maklumat tambahan, right? I don't think I need to say much of it. I will just mention about one thing, which is the account belong to Rima and account belong by a related item. You know why? Because this one here is exactly the same step as you have in your Record that link up chapter. Now, if you guys rajin, right, okay, after this live class, uh, you can go and see my explanation for record that link up. You will realize the steps that I put here is exactly the same as how I explain for record that link up. So then, what's the difference? The only difference is the term have changed. Instead of model hour, we call it dana the kumpu hour. But you see, uh, for the bank and the pelarasan step, is same thing one, okay? So I was thinking for same thing only, okay? So here, the maklumat tambahan, uh, be aware of these two types, which is the pulangan and also the discount. Okay, now pulangan got two types, pulangan belian, pulangan jualan. Discount also got two, discount diterima and discount diperima. So I'll just put one of it for example, okay. Pulangan jualan. Discount diberima. Okay, then you guys draw another line. Versus, again, Pulangan jualan discount diberi. Okay, hold on. Eh. If the question didn't ask for the whole PKK, we don't need to care account uh, uh, care about okay care about the susut nilai the kumpo for ABS. Yes, correct. That's correct because we are not gonna be preparing the asset section. The liability section. So, what is the purpose of me preparing susut nilai terkumpul, right? So, we don't do extra work for them. They ask for it, I will do. They don't ask, then I don't do. You understand? Okay, so we're going to make our life easier. Lah. Otherwise, cannot finish the entire question. Alright, so here, I have two types of pulangan jalan. This can't be I mean, if they are the same type. Lah. But I'm talking about two different scenarios. Okay, situasi satu dengan situasi kedua. Situasi... Satu, this is situasi kedua. What is the difference between situasi satu and situasi kedua? Yeah, I wanna kind of test my students a little bit. Okay, um, last I mean this week lah, we just finished about six, right? You remember what's the difference between the situasi satu and situasi dua or not? I haven't write the keyword out yet. You remember what is the keywords that make them two different? The situasi satu and the situasi dua. Okay, I'm just going to go on and put the numbers first while you guys type your answer at the chat for me to see whether or not you get the correct uh, answer that I'm asking for. Okay, so I'm just going to put the 200 and 130. Same thing. This is the amount of it. So the difference about situasi satu and situasi dua is what? <laughs>
I finally know why I cannot see comment place because I use Oh okay So now you can use it already <laughs> Okay, okay, good, good, good. Then you can comment already. Alright, so since that nobody is telling me what is the difference between Situasi Satu and Dua, I'll just, I'll just assume that you guys have forgotten it. Okay, so for Situasi Satu, they will just say Pulangan Jalan RM200, Discount Delivery RM130. Finish. This is the sentence structure, just like that. Well, for Situasi Dua, they will give you a full sentence with mentioning these keywords below the record the mana mana buku okay now actually right you don't need to have the entire belum the record the mana mana buku you just need to make sure that they did say belum the record then can already okay you just need to say see that they have written belum the record then can already confirm okay so when they say belum the record uh, you will have one more extra step to do so i will compare it for you all uh. for situasi satu your step one is put pulangan jalan into akp discount debris into belanja section okay this is their first step because we're talking about two things right so it feels like a lot of things to do uh. but actually if they just give you pulangan jalan right then you this is all you gotta write okay pulangan jalan into account perdagangan discount delivery into the belanja section this is the step one and for the second step second step is gonna be having both the item again pulangan jalan and discount delivery to be put into your account kawalan to be put into your account kawalan below the river that's it okay your step two is like this now for situasi dua yeah you're gonna have the same exact two steps okay same exact two steps over here but with an extra one step three Tolak A, B, K. Okay, so of course I'm going to be very uh, very in detail for you guys in case you don't know where to minus the ABT from. But you need to understand like, ABT got lucky, BB got lucky HP, right? So that, that is where the number is. So we will adjust the bucky HP of our account below three. The HP will be affected. So what's the reason that we did not minus ABT for the situasi satu? Because right, they are kind of telling you, oh, there is pulangan jalan, there is discount delivery, full stop. Did they say, oh, you haven't do the uh, account belum terima yet, you haven't recorded both the steps. So why is it that we assume this way? Uh? It's because you look at your entire question, right? They will give you baki area, baki area, okay, which is the BB, and the HP, they will also provide you with the buku tunai where you see all the uh, pasil can find from here, belanja you can find from the credit side of buku tunai. But do you ever see anywhere that can give you info such as pulangan jalan, discount delivery? Cannot. So they can only give you true maklumat tamahan, means those are not recorded. But ABT is clearly already inside the baki area, means already settled. So why would you need to help them do it again? Leh? So that is the logic behind situasi satu. Why is it that I no need to minus ABT? Because they didn't say it's not recorded at all. They are only telling you, please go and help this pulangan jalan and discount delivery find a place to put. Not that they want you to minus dari pada ABT ataupun ABB. Okay, so this is for our belarsan lah, finish already basically. So anything else I'd say, no lah, not much already. The maklumat tambahan confusing part is only the account belong terima and account belong bayar items such as pulangan dengan discount. Okay, so my explanations is done already. So shall we start with our exercise? Now for the Uran part, right, I believe that most of you are confused with the Uran, especially when they give you three years. Okay, so I'm just going to talk about that, then we start with the question, okay? So Uran uh, will be inside your buku tonight. Right? Okay, Uran, uh, this is your buku tonight. This is your Uran. Okay, so they usually right will put Uran dot dot or Uran Ali dot dot with 2018, 2019, and 2020. 
So there's three years, right? Now I'll tell you exactly what you have to do. You just need to remember this format will do the structure. Uh. Every time you have to do 2018 to Kira, you run Lapo. 2020 to become you run below third per only that is to be used as a HP inside your account you run Ali. So it's fixed already. Every time you just need to see uh, if there is three years, the first year help you to count you run Lapo. The third year help you to become you run balloon turbole then what about the the, the center one eh? hey the 2019 no need to do anything ah. so actually right the arrangement is like this 2018 last year 2019 this year 2020 eh? next year okay so if it's this year's you run is there anything I can do with it? I say, no, lah, we just receive ma, so later put into account you run Ali lah. But for 2020, I know we received it, but what is the reason you receive it now? Lah? It's for 2020 war. You already receive it on 2019. Eh? Means that these people pay early, which we call them as Belum Te Po Ole. Uh, uh, means early lah. Okay, guys, <laughs> translate back. It means early law. So if I don't record it down, lah, then next year, I will totally forget about this case. Then I will go to the Ali okay, and go to the member and tell them, Hey, you haven't paid yet. Faster pay to me. Then your member is going to be like, Huh? I paid already more last year. You see, I got receipt some more. So that's why, uh, in order to avoid this kind of mistake, we make sure as we write into our buku tonight, we label properly what is the payment for. Is it for 2018, 2019? or 2020 so they are for different purposes lah, obviously okay so 2018 lah, how are we gonna use it to kira yuran lapo so you're gonna take it from your baki bb area okay baki bb and baki hp you can find for this word yuran below the river this is the key point okay you're gonna take the number let's say lah, okay let's say uh, is um 700 Okay, let's say it's a 700. I'm going to take this number, compare it to whatever you see inside the Google tonight. Let's say it's a 680. Okay, let's say it's a 680. So why is that we can take the Uran Balom BB 700 to compare with the 680 we see inside the Google tonight? Because if I say this one is last year. Last year means a Baki BB also from last year, right? And uh, why would we receive 2018? Because these people didn't pay last year. Now only they pay. So from this comparison, I can find out that last year I got 700 people, have uh, 700 ringgit haven't paid yet. But now got 680 paid. Did I get to receive all of them? I didn't. I actually still lacking off 20 ringgit so this 20 will then become my you run lapo so it's fixed already one i would say uh, basically right as long as you see the you run having three years then confirm got you run lapo so you just need to take your baki bb of you run balloon terimer compared to the number here if it's different then take the difference as your you run lapo but what if uh, it's no difference it's 700 also guys got you run lapo or not okay so y'all can type it at the chat for me because even though it's gonna be delayed i still hope to see your answers okay if it's a 700 inside your buku tonight got you run lapo or not guys all right got you run lapo or not <laughs> okay so i'm excited to see your answers uh, but a bit delayed uh. i don't know whether y'all will answer me or not so you run balloon theory mark 700 your you run 2018 also 700 wall. I say already, only the difference is you run lapo. So if you minus, no difference, then got you run lapo. Don't have lock, then no need to do for the question. There is no you run lapo existing. Okay, yeah? so here our 2020 also will become our you run balloon turbo ole. So usually, right, the question will likely to leave it empty at the bucky area. Okay, they put you run balloon turbo ole. Maybe they will give you the Baki BB, but the back, right, they will put a question mark or even just leave it blank. So where are you going to get the HP from? It's going to be from your Buku tonight, the last year. That number you put into your account, you run Ali as you run Balong Terpo Ole Budu. 
Okay, yeah? so the three years is like this. Uh, and other than, you know, using the first year and the third year, right? One more step you have to do is to take all three years. Take all three years. Jumlahkan. Hey guys, don't mind. Uh, I roja roja because this is Malaysia, ma, okay? Malaysia, we use all our language together. One, uh, huh? So take all three years, jumlahkan, and you get bank. Okay? And you get bank. So why is that? Because even though these numbers, they are 2018, they are 2020 that I received, but isn't it appearing in my buku tonight of 2019? So they are still considered the amount diterima bagi yuran tahun ini. Isn't it? So I would have to take all three years, jumlahkan, and later to be written as bank, gonna do a catatan bergu into our account, you run Ali. But which side? This is now the debit side. Mah. I wanna do catatan bergu. Make sure that you understand it's always one time debit, one time credit. So if I have it now on the debit side, means that another step is gonna be credit side into account, you run Ali. Okay, bank to be written, go to the credit side of account you run Ali and the number is the Joomla of all three years. So the most common mistake is even though you all understand the first and the last year is to be you run Lapo, you run Belong Terpo Ole, you all tend to take just the 2019 as the bank but cannot. Actually, we did receive all three years so you have to Joomla kan before you move it into your account you run. Okay, yeah? so this is it for our uh, U-run explanation, especially when it comes to three years. Okay? Now guys, if they didn't give you three years, okay, versus just U-run Ali, 7,000, uh, then this one, uh, you don't find your U-run Lapo from here already, okay? You want to find U-run Lapo, you have to go and look at your makrumat tambahan and see whether they mention how to calculate or not. If they did say, then got. Never say about Yuran Lapo, then don't have. You see the difference? Okay, one is just straight away total up. This is Yuran Ali. But versus the other one is giving you three different years. Means they want to use them for different purpose. First one, give her Yuran Lapo. Last one, as Yuran Belum Terpole. So you must uh, able to tell uh, whether this question got you run lapo or not, it depends on the years. Okay, alright, so we have finished with all the explanation. Lah. This is for your club dan persatuan. Lah. So now let's start with our soalan. Is there any questions you guys want to ask? Can leave it at the chat. Yeah, I'll answer you when I see it. Alright, okay, so question paper. Just uh, two questions, okay, from our Johor Batu Pahat. So the first step, can you all remember what is your first step? First step is you have to find your dana to kumpul awal but of course before that right we read the question first okay the starting part so they said uh baki baki yang berikut diambil daripada club putra putri taman bukit indah pada 31st december 2018 so the year is 2018 yeah and now we're going to find dana terkumpul awal. But you do not need to use a you know, space here because do you see they have an entire list? Later on, when you find your dana terkumpul awal, you just need to put it at the bottom. Okay, put it at the bottom. But one very important thing is, hey, later, uh, do I need asset and liability for PKK? Uh, so important, right? We go ahead and read the anda dikehendaki first. So go to the very bottom. Okay, look at the anda di kehendaki. Yeah, part A predicted account you run as always. And we're going to have account kawalan belum bayar. Alright. Uh, C is account perdagangan. D, account pendapatan dan perbelanjaan. And for E, PKK. And you see the back. Bahagian dana terkumpul sahaja. So do we need asset and liability? Now if they say only dana terkumpul, means just the EP section. We don't need to prepare asset and liability for them okay so no need asset and liability so uh, i'm not sure whether you all will know what is the types of asset and liability we don't need or not but i will list up some example for you all example s and t we don't need or the pra baya belum baya belum terima Belum terperoleh, 
all donate, okay? Because they, they didn't want for asset and liability, ma. so I label out, I put assets, a muscle, liabilities, a muscle, also nobody's going to see, so why I waste my time? All I need to know is when I encounter these four terms, I just need to do plus or minus to find my belanja ataupun hasil yang sebenar. That's all. Okay, eh? so let's go ahead to the next step. Okay, so since that they say dana terkumpul saja, let's go and find dana terkumpul awal. So they will be down here underneath of my 1st January 2018 at the very last place. Okay, draw a line as total. And then we're going to start by labeling all the assets and liability. But you want to be um, easier, right? Say, because susut nilai, if let's say got penilaian semula lah, it's only applying on asset bukan semasa. So maybe you spend some effort lah to label properly. So you go by faster. You run belong terima is AS. Okay, you run belong terbo oleh LS. Premise club ABS, premise club is ABS, majalah belum bayar, LS, inventory alat tulis, AS, alatan sukan, ABS. Now for bank, right, you'll be aware of the front and the back. Lah. Maybe uh, the front is positive, the back is negative, eh? so check. Oh. Okay, they put bank, the front is positive, the back is question mark. Okay, so never mind, we put AS. We put AS. Continue, account belong bayar kedai Dobby is LS, and lastly, inventory plug Dobby. Okay, so this is our, I think there's a spelling error here, should be kedai Dobby lah. You all change it lah, kedai Dobby. So once you guys have labeled already, remember the formula is to take asset tolak liability, which will help you to find dana terkumpul awal. Dana terkumpul awal. A minus L. So all the asset, right, you put positive symbol. Liability, you put negative symbol. Very fast one, okay? So all the asset, eh? positive. Liability, negative. So you repeat. If it's dash, right, then just ignore that because no numbers. Ah. So all the asset, you put positive. Liability, you put negative. <laughs> wow, got people found already. Ah. Very good, okay? So let me count and tell you whether your answer is correct or not, okay? So 700 minus 800 plus 120,000. Minus 50 plus 5,800, 15,300 minus 1,400 and plus 1,900. Okay, so we have a super fast student already found the hour, which is the correct amount. You should be able to get 141,450. So this is our dana tekumpu hour. Alright, so any problem so far? Is it all okay? Dana tekumpu hour. So if we have already found our dana to kumpul awal, this will be used for PKK later on. Okay, this will be for our PKK later on. So we just keep it here. Lah. First step is done already. Now you all remember what is your second step? Second step is to cari banks baki HP. Okay, banks baki HP. But can you guys tell me, is it needed for me to find banks baki HP? Based on this question, okay, do I need to find banks baki HP? So you think properly about it. Okay, is it needed? I find it really got used or not. Uh, don't find got any problem not. <laughs> okay, so you compare it. Need or don't need? Uh, okay. So um, now, since that the question said is only PKK bahagian dana tekumpu sahaja. So why why do I bother finding asset for them, right? Since bank is a type of asset war. So don't waste your time guys, okay? Skip it. We're not gonna do bank and now we're gonna go into Pelarasan. So Pelarasan, the first area that we're gonna go into is market area. But I wanna say, okay, there's no problem for you to swap it. You wanna do maklumat tambahan first only to do your market area, no issue at all. Okay, but you gotta have like a you know, safety precaution lah. Because sometimes, right, Baki area has it. Your maklumat tambahan also have the same thing to do pelarasan. Well, then you need to do double, right? Mm, then it's best not to directly change the number. Maybe you just put it by the side. Reserve the step first. Once we have concluded maklumat tambahan got no same things, then we can go and adjust the figure. Lah, so it will be better that way. Lah, okay, so now let's take a look at our Baki area. Search for any terkurang, terlebih, or even susut nilai penilaian semula. Okay, so we go back to the questionnaire. I'm going to close this. So from top to bottom, 
you all see any tegurang ataupun telebe. So now I'm going to point out some tegurang telebe that we cannot take here. Example, you ran belong the rimmer, don't take. Now you don't cut. Uh. I'm just using my pointer later, it will be gone. Uh. Okay, so don't cut. Uh. Just telling you this one cannot take. It's not. You ran belong the pole, also no, no. It's meant for account you ran. So these two skip. We have majalah belong bayar. Now this is the one that you can do your belarasan. Why? Because majalah is a type of belanja, isn't it? You spend money on buying your, what is it called? A magazine, a majalah. So we can take it, put a star, put a star. And then, inventory alat tulis is also part of the belarasan, guys. Inventory alat tulis. So put star. Two belarasan. Eh? Anything else? We continue to see. Then no more, uh, no more the kurang telebe already. What's left is only with the premise and the alatan sukan. So we need to check lah whether got penilaian semula or not. So you look at the front and the back ah, the baki HP and the BB right. This is BB, this is HP. So you look at your premise, the front and the back, same same. If it's the same, no penilaian semula. Okay, confirm no penilaian semula. Then we move on to. Alatan sukan. Okay, alatan sukan. Look at the front and the back. Is it the same? Eh, suddenly it become different already. Well, you see the difference, right, between the premise and the alatan sukan? So obviously now, my alatan sukan actually have penilaian similar. So how am I supposed to find the penilaian similar there? Later, we just need to take this as the baki BB. This as the HP. So I, I will go and figure out whether got any burly ataupun draw of my alatan sukan. So we will find it from the account penerimaan dan pembayaran known as buku tunai. Okay, so I'm going to settle with these two first because they are easier. Uh, for the penilaian semula, we wait later. Okay, so for majalah, belum bayar. We look at HB first, yeah? Guys, belum bayar. Since I'm going to be late, I'm just going to ask. You'll just answer, okay? After that, I'm going to tell you guys the answer straight away, okay? So, for belum bayar. Belum bayar means tegurang, right? Okay, tegurang. Huh? Should I plus or should I minus? Belum bayar. Should I plus or should I minus? So, you'll just answer it at the chat. Even though I will be telling you guys the answer straight away. <laughs> just try, okay? Belum bayar tegurang ma. When it's too little. If I still continue to minus it, it will make it even lesser, okay? That's not my intention. I want to make it back to what it's supposed to be. So we will do plus for it, correct? Okay, so we will have a plus on the number. Then you see, uh, suppose the front must be opposite type of, you know, if uh, symbol, right? So if the back is positive, then the front should be minus. Eh, just nice. Just now already labeled minus all. So good job. We don't need to do anything already. Just apply this to our majala. Okay, so as I say, we want to be safer a bit, right? What if later I adjust already? Maklumat tamahan got again. Eh? So I will just go on to the majala and put the minus 50 plus 140. Now, if you feel like this is very troublesome, Hiya, did you want to do so many things? Then you can try Go into your maklumat tambahan and search for anything related to majalah or not. Okay, so we see point one is you run. Point two is say what. Point three, lebihan kutiban. Point four is kada bayaran. So nothing to do with your majalah, right? Then okay, you are safe to go. You can directly change the number of 220 into the new number after belarasan. So you guys calculate 220 minus 50 plus 140. What is the new answer for your majalah? Okay, 220 minus 50 plus 140. Once we do the processes, you should get your majalah to be 310. Okay, you should get your majala to be 310. So once you've done that, right, don't need to doubt it. Majala is a type of belanja. Now, I would usually put the B symbol by the side of the number, lah, but then I feel like maybe it's a bit packed for you all. Then you can just put it by the name if you want. Okay, right, correct, it's 310. So let's continue to the next one. It's our alat tulis. Alat tulis, right? So you see, the beginning of it is dash. Dash, okay. Dash means nothing. So we used to have no stationaries at all. Zero. 
And then why is it that I am left with 50 ringgit? Leh? I didn't have a lot to list. How to have remaining amount? Okay, so we see ah. A uh, 50 ma. We search for a lot to list in our buku tonight. You sure bought already. If not, how to have remainders, right? So you go to your perm by rent site and look for the word a lot to list. Okay, look for the word a lot to list. You see this? This is what we call as birdie. Okay, now I put small, small because I want to erase it later on. Okay, so y'all don't use pen, uh. use pencil. Burly, small, small, you write that. Okay, burly. So I have bought how much of alat tulis? We have bought a total of 130 worth alat tulis. So, so I don't have any stationery, so I've only got calculator. So let's just assume this calculator cost me 130 plus other other stuff, stuff stationery. Okay, total 130. And now the question tells me that you are left with only 50 ringgit worth. Of alat tulis. So, eh, uh, how many alat tulis did I use the way? Leh? So, you want to find out how much you use, right? You will take 130 minus whatever that is left, 50 ringgit. So, total I have used for alat tulis is equals to 80. Okay, so the answer is 80. I'm going to take this and put it over here to replace the 130 so become 80 already this alat to this will then become my belanja now if you feel like it's hard to remember okay what is remainder and stuff like that right you can apply your usual way how you do your account perdagangan's cost jollet okay in cost jollet inventory hour is always to plus inventory up here is always to minus isn't it so you just need to see that way law always inventory hour plus inventory are here minus then there's no problem with it already every time it's going to be the standard way for you to do your alat tulis belanja so you see uh, even if the front right i give you a certain number it's still the same way of working i'm going to take this let's say 20 ringgit okay 20 ringgit add together with my bullion 130 which i will get it to be 150 this is the total i used to have but in the end i'm left with the 50 ringgit so means how many Alat tulis that I use, uh, total is a hundred ringgit that I have used away. So no matter they give you the front or not, still the same way. So uh, front and back must be different symbol. This is what you need to remember. Okay, so we have that with both of these pelara side. Let's move on to our penilaian semula, which is the alatan sukan. So I will also check a bit first. Is there anything that they want me to do at the maklumat tambahan? meant for alatan sukat so we check lor. number one don't have number two don't have number three and number four also don't have alatan sukat so since that they didn't give me anything about alatan sukat means my susut nilai must be based on the front and the back lah. but now all the amount increased already was so weird right so we can find okay uh potentially jualan Per alatan, uh, sorry jualan alatan sukan should be from the penerimaan side and berlian alatan sukan should be here so what's the logic because you sell right sell of course you will receive money isn't it okay if you buy then you will pay money ma. so where you find your jualan debit side okay where you find your belian credit side of the buku today so we find for the keyword alatan sukan do you see it anywhere inside your account penerimaan dan pembayaran Okay, I'm just going to split it into half uh, so you can see the sides differently. Left side and the right side. Can you all see alatan sukan? Alright, so we try uh, Left side. Don't have alatan sukan. Okay, nope. Don't have anything like that at all. So we go to the right hand side. Bumbayaran. Anything alatan sukan? No, we, also, we have. Okay, it's over here. And somewhere in the middle. Uh, okay, underneath of your majala. Do you see the alatan sukan? So this is actually the amount that we have bought, burly. So can y'all recall back what exactly is this alatan sukan inside of our pembayaran section? This is actually our perbelanjaan modal. But do we really need to write it out? Because there's nowhere I can put it. If I bought alatan sukan, all I need to do is just increase it into my ABS will do lah because it will make my ABS more ma. So there's nowhere else you can put it other than just that one step, tambah ke dalam ABS. Exactly as what I have written in the nota over here. If it's a perbelanjaan 
model is always burly abs baharu so your only step is to add it into your abs that's it okay yeah? so when you do that okay you're gonna add it into our alatan sukan so the amount that i've bought is 2500 do i still need to keep it inside my buku dunai let me tell you you don't need to do that anymore because i will not use it anywhere else so you can go on and cut off the entire alatan sukan from your buku tunai cut it off take the 2500 add into alatan sukan's baki bb okay so 5800 plus 2500 will equals to how much guys is it 7750 okay we find huh? 5,800 plus 2,500. Suppose, after you add together, it's not 7,750, okay? It's 8,300, isn't it? Okay, can you find 8,300. So, I'm going to cut off this 7,750, but at the same time, you need to understand that 7,750 is your nilai buku, while 8,300 is your cost. So, you want to find your susu nilai? You just need to compare these two, 8,300 minus 7,750, susut nilai is equals to 5,5,0. This is your answer for susut nilai ala tan suka. Okay, um, that means any ABS appear in pembayaran is sure per belanjaan model. Yes, correct. That's the correct contact. So any ABS, you see burly, burly lah, okay? only from the pembayaran side, eh? then it's per belanjaan model. That's right. That's the only way they can come up with the perbelanjaan model. Nowhere else already. Okay, correct. So we have found out the susut nilai through comparing uh, the cost to minus with nilai buku. So you got your SM. You see where you want to put it like anywhere you're comfortable with. But I will usually put it together with all the belanja uh, section here. So underneath of the upah kedai dobi, I will put SN. Alatan sukan. So it's easier for me to locate all my belanja all in one shot. Lah. Okay, so I'm gonna put the writing there, uh, sorry, the working there, so that you guys can refer next time. It's gonna be 8,300 minus 7,750. So answer 550 belanja symbol. Alright, we're done. Okay, so um, basically all the belanja lah from our Baki area. Finish already. So next up, we're gonna go into our maklumat tambahan. Okay, maklumat tambahan. Ah. Let's go on to the bottom. So for the first point, it says number one, yuran yang tidak dapat dikutip untuk tahun 2017 dianggap sebagai yuran lapo. Now this one is which type of yuran lapo question? Eh? Now just I gave you guys two examples, my friends. Okay, just need to be aware. Lah. You see the buku tonight. Is, is it they split the Uran to three years or is it they give you just one Uran Ali? So look at our Bernarima answer. Yeah. Can you guys see? Our Uran is being split into three different years 2017, 2018, and 2019. So the way you're going to use it is going to be first year to find Uran Lapo, last year to find Uran Belong. So let's go ahead and label them now, okay? So the Uran 2017, don't label first. Just straight away go to the 2019 one. Ter Ole. Later be used as Baki HP. But what do you guys think? Uran belong Ter Per Ole's HP. Okay, first thing, classifikasi ya, must be very clear. Uran belong Ter Per Ole is our liability semasa, isn't it? So LS ah, Baki BB is always starts on the credit side, which is their original position, while Baki HB then is going to be on the opposite side. So now I'm looking at my Uran Belong Terpo Ole as HB because it's year end. Ma. So the direction I'm going to put it into is the debit side. So here we go, debit. Okay, I'm going to put slightly, you know, further a bit because you know what? Later, I need to jumlakan the three numbers, right? So, I got to save some space uh, so I can draw my, you know, bracket. Uh. If not, we can draw, okay? So, I'm going to draw first. Uh, reserve the spot, uh, okay? Draw first. I want to find jumla. So, bank. Go to which side? This is the debit side of buku tonight. So, later, I was going to do a chatatan buku from the debit side to the credit side of our bank. Alright, so now uh, we have gotten a total of heaven, so we count first, okay? 650 
plus 7,200 plus 8, uh, 280. So this three. Jumlah kat. How much is the yuran that we received in the year of 2018? Add together all three number of our yuran. It will equal to 8130. Yes, correct. 8130. That's right. So this is the total that we're going to bring into our account Yuran Ali later on. But there is still one more step to do, which is the Yuran Tahun 2017. So they already said, okay, they said that uh, Yuran yang tidak dapat dikutip. Do you see this one here, the 650, is inside your buku tonight? Dikutip or belum dikutip? Obviously, this 650 is telah dikutip lah. So where is the belum dikutip? Uh, the belum dikutip is up here at the yuran belum terima. You haven't received ma, haven't kutip lah. So I will take this number 700, 700, compare it to the amount dikutip bagi tahun 2017. So the yuran lapo turns out to be how much? 700 minus 650. Difference is a uh, 50 ringgit. So we just need to take this 50, create a new point for it. So again, I will put it together with the belanja section. Okay. Otherwise, you feel like very packed, right? You just use back uh, Yuran Lapo 50 ringgit belanja. Okay. So it should be easy to count like 700 minus 650. Difference is 50 ringgit law. So we use back the term they gave us. Yuran Lapo 50 ringgit as belanja. One more step is you're going to put it into account. You run. Oh, let me see. Yeah. Oh, they say account you run. Correct. Okay, so account you run and the positioning is going to be on the credit side. So the reason why is because you run lapo is a type of belanja. So belanja bertambah, you want to do a catatan berguma. Okay, so you want you run over here inside you run lapo. So on the debit side for Yuran Lapo, but catatan bergu ke dalam credit side of account you run. So they will be, you know, opposite direction. Okay, so part one is settled. Now, do not go and cut off your 650. Yeah. You still need it one as a jumlah. So, you just take it to do comparison. That's all. Don't cut off anything. Alright, so part two. Sewa club 500 ringgit setiap bulan. So, what are you supposed to do with this? Eh? I will tell you, every time they tell you setiap bulan, eh, means you have to times 12. Go and find out what is the serbana for the year. So, if one month is 500 ringgit, that means how much I have to pay per year. Leh? Okay, so 500 times 12. We are supposed to pay 6,000 ringgit per year. Okay, you guys can count. Leh? 500 times 12, you should get 6,000 ringgit. So this 6,000 ringgit, I will then go into the Panerima section. Uh, sorry, not, uh, sorry, let me see. Yeah. It's not us paying or it's us receiving it, okay? I thought it was like the Sewer Club that we have to pay for. Turns out it was at our Penerima An section, so that was my fault. Never mind, we are supposed to receive 6,000 ringgit. Okay, so here, we only gotten 4,000. Eh, so how ah? Eh, no need to worry lah. Just cut it off. Change to 6,000 will do. And this is gonna be your hasil. And there's nothing else you need to do. Okay, because usually if we want to do the full step, right, we will take the 2,000 as belum terima. But because our PKK is only asking for EP sahaja, do I want to do this step for them? No need lah, why you waste your time, right? Okay, so we just keep, just do the plus minus. But instead of plus minus, we directly change the number to the serbana. Okay, so second point is finished. Okay, let's continue to our third point. Third point talks about lebihan kutipan pesta amal akan digunakan untuk membina gelakang futsal. Uh, sorry, typing error, yeah. Futsal pula. It's futsal. Okay, F. Gelanggang futsal. So, uh, I'm not going to call it membina gelanggang futsal because we didn't build the gelanggang yet. We said it's going to be used for membina. But have we built it? Not yet. We just received kutip sahaja. So how are we going to find the lebihan? Eh? Lebihan means extra, yeah, guys. The extras from kutipan pesta amal. Okay, so pesta amal is our keyword. You look at here on the penerimaan side, okay, we have kutip total of 30,700 uh, 30, ringgit. Okay, kutipan. 30,700 ringgit. And versus 
Pembayaran. Do you see any pesta amount word? Pesta amount over here. Belanja pesta amount. So it's a total of 2,500 ringgit, right? So I'm going to minus it off 2,500. And we proceed to check. Is there anything else pesta amount? Maybe we missed out. Eh? Okay. Pesta amount. Eh? Okay. No more already. Just one. So since there's only one, once I've minus already, then the total is going to be what I call as Lerihan Kutipan Pesta Amok. So uh, 30,700 minus 2,500 is equal to 28200 Lerihan Kutipan Pesta Ama. Okay, so for you all to decide, uh, should I put H symbol or should I put PKK? What do you all think about this? Should I put H symbol or should I put PKK? If it's for Membina Gelanggang Futsal. Take a look at the keyword I said, yeah. Membina Gelanggang Futsal. Which section is it meant for? Okay, so now this kutiban here, there is a specific purpose for it. So when I receive it, yeah, okay, it's for pasta, it's just a regular event. But now that I say I'm going to use it to build a galangang in the future, there's no way else I'm going to put it yeah. So it's meant for PKK, correct? So I do not need to write it as pendapatan model. No need, because later on, I just need to write lebihan kutipan pesta amal into my PKK, that's all. So the pendapatan model is just a type, a genus that you need to understand, that's all. Okay, yeah? so I'm going to label this one is for PKK. Alright, so we have done. Do you still need to see any kutipan and the belanja inside? Say, no need already. You can go on and cut them off because we already settled with the pesta armor. Because the remainder, we're going to bring into PKK. Yes, correct. So let's move on to the next uh, next point, number four. Okay, number four. Eh? 60% daripada kada bayaran adalah untuk kedai dobi. So they say 60% from the kada bayaran. Oh, it's not just for the, the uh, normal opera club, but instead, part of it is for Kedai Dobi. We have a side business. So, let's go to the Kada Bayaran. Okay, what I'm going to do is like this, because uh, write two times. You take the 4,800, right? Okay, take the 4,800 times 60%. Okay, times 60%. You will get it to be Kada Bayaran. Kedai Dobi. Now, our highlighters will uh, officially be induced. Uh, I say two colors at least. Uh. So, I take one of my favorite color, okay? So, I highlight Kada Bayaran. Kedai Dobi equals to 60%, am I right? Okay, from the 4,800, uh, it will be 2,880. So, don't put any Berlanja symbol on this because it's not, okay? This Kada Bayaran Kedai Dobi like, is meant for account Perdagangan Kedai Dobi later on. So you just put AKP for it. And then now, what's next? We're going to go back into the Kada Bayaran and make sure this 4,800 will have to exclude the Kedai Dobi amount. So you take 4,800 minus 2880. What's left is going to be meant for your Belanja, regular Kada Bayaran. So change it, you should get one nine two zero. So you put your symbol Belanja. Is it okay so far? Just split to two sections are forty percent and sixty percent. Now if you didn't get that, why is it forty percent? Just ask yourself. Percentage in full is hundred ma maximum is hundred. So if sixty is at Kedai Dobi, then forty percent is for normal opera of club that But there's no need for you to times are just minus will do. Okay, so. We have already finished all of our Belarasan. Okay, good job guys. We have done the Belarasan already. So what's next? Yeah. Okay, so what's next is going to be all the labelings to be done. Okay, so I'm going to go into my Penerimaan section. Penerimaan section. Label the Hasil Kedai Dobi for AKP. Okay, for AKP. Now, I know that for sure, there is no Jualan credit. You know why? Because at the Anda di Kehendaki area, they only ask for account kawalan belum bayar. Means I can only find Belian credit out of it. 
I can only find Berlin Credit. Now, whether or not I got a uh, Jalan Credit, you can also check from the Baki area. You see, do you find any account balloon terima up here in this section? Now, for me, I don't see any account balloon terima, right, guys? Okay, no ABT. Or, so, no need, no. there's no account card. Eh? We only got Jalan Sechara Bank. Jalan Sechara tonight. That's the only method that we have. Well, for Berlian Kedai Dobby, okay, this one here. Berlian Kedai Dobby, you need to make sure you take the 1200 plus with the Berlian credit amount before you can put into account perdagangan. So we are going to change the number later on. So I'm just going to go ahead and cut it off and wait for the outcome later. Okay, so I'm not going to terbalik the steps of course. We need to do account urine first only to part B account current. So we do step by step. But the honorarium is belanja. Cursus motivasi also belanja. No changes. Then we have um, Upa Kedai Dobi for account perdagangan. Did you guys see that there is a pertandingan memasak and yuran pertandingan memasak? So what I will do is actually to combine them into untung ataupun rugi. So just compare. Okay, guys, look at this. Yeah, 3550. I received 3550, but I only spent 1800. Did I get untung or did i get rugi from the pertandingan memasak i say the answer is quite clear right okay <laughs> obviously i'm getting a untung pertandingan memasak so what i would do is i will go to the hasil section and write untung pertandingan memasak untung pertandingan memasak and the number okay and the number is gonna be yeah, sorry, press wrong. It's going to be 1750. You'll check whether you can get it or not. Okay, Untung Pertandingan Memasa is 1750. So this is a hasil. Once you've combined already, then of course you don't keep them anymore. Cut off the Uran Pertandingan Memasa and also the Belanja Pertandingan Memasa. Okay, so so far, what we can see from just the Ringkasan Buku Dunai area is that we are going to have two hasil two ready hasil and also we have one two three four five six seven seven belanja so far so what's next we're gonna find you run and the abb okay so you guys take out your exercise book okay if you don't have exercise book as i said prepare test pads line papers anything like that anything with lines actually is bad is good enough already because we will be drawing you know row by row so it's better you have it with you Okay, so we're going to start with our account you run. So guys, I'm definitely going to take, you know, extend our time already because I'm still at bulk 6. So sorry for that, but I will still carry on. If you cannot continue anymore, you got to prepare for your uh, tomorrow's exam, then you can just leave the class, uh, then you play back later on. Okay, so for our part A, we're going to be doing account you run, yeah? Now actually, I'm planning to stop until account perdagangan. Then the rest you can do by yourself already because uh, back just need to follow the format copy hasil belanja side lah, okay so you run is always in t shape because it's a leja okay it's a leja so i will prepare about six rows for it lah. don't need to be too much it's quite short only and the inside part it's is fixed the really one so account you run Actually, last time, right, our syllabus allows students to put Baki BB and Baki HP. But personally, if you ask me, like, I would prefer to put Uran Belong Terima and Uran Belong Terpo Because at least I know uh, whether they are across of each other or not for the BB and the HP. It's not so easily confused. Alright, so we're going to copy in for our Baki BB first. Now, look at your Baki area. Do you see you have Uran Belong Terima and Uran Belong Terpo These two. Okay, so we're going to arrange it according to classifikasi. Belong terima is asset, so we put on the debit side. While belong terpo ole is liability, we're going to put it to the credit side. So that is how we begin. Obviously, they're going to sit on different positions. Okay? Two different baki bb. Okay, so copy. Follow the date, 2018, January 1st. 2018, January 1st. You run below the rimmer on the debit side. You run below the rimmer on the debit side. It's a 700. And then on the credit side, we're going to have you run below the per only. You run below the per only. 
So this one here is 800 ringgit. 800 ringgit. So now after you have written this, immediately change the date to your year end, which is December 31st. Otherwise, later you will get uh, format problems because your dates are different. Uh, dates are wrong. So you need to have it to be December 31st. And then we're going to insert the center parts. So not your HB. Yeah. Baki HB is the last step. So inside, anything you want to arrange them anyway also can. As long as it's not HB first up, then can already. So I'm going to start by taking in the Joomla amount that we received for you, right? That is inside your Bernary Ma'an section. This one here. 8130 to be on the credit side. So we copy that. Okay, put it into credit side. Bang. Total we receive for the year 8130. Now, after you guys have put this, I want you to immediately go to the opposite direction, debit side, and reserve a spot for the friend. Okay, the friend is called Penda Patan Dan Perbelanjaan. Now, maybe you guys will feel that this word is a bit weird. Like, we don't usually have pendapatan dan perbelanja unwritten, alright? But I'll give you guys an example what you used to learn in your form 4. Bab 8.1, Pelarasan Chapter, T format. We used to have bank as well. And the opposite side, we will have the word UR. UR stands for what? Anything that is serbana. So, our task now is actually to find out how much we should receive for the Uran in 2018. So excluding the Belong Terima from last year, excluding the Belong Terpo Ole for the next year. So that's why we will have all this as BB dengan HP for us to find the Serbuna. So it will be an unknown. Now of course, during the exam, you are not allowed to use red pen, but now I want to make it more obvious, so I will use red pen, okay? Exam time, change to blue pen also can, but you use black pen all the way, lah, no problem. Man. Okay, so here, we done writing, reserve the spot already. Then you can carry on with your Uran Lapo. Uran Lapo is here to be the 50 ringgit. We say need to put to Uran's credit side, right? So just copy lah, okay? Go to the Uran's credit side, Uran Lapo. And now finally, the last step is to put in our Baki HP. Okay, finally, the last step is Baki HP. So, HP uh, arrangement, very simple. Ma. If Belong Terima, BB is here, then the HP is opposite. Belong Terpo Ole, BB on the credit side, then HP is going to be on the debit side. So, the matter is whether we have it or not. Lah. Okay, so let's check here. Yeah. Belong Terpo Ole, confirm have, but Belong Terima, A, also have for, okay, 250. We're going to put it to the credit side. 250 to the credit side. So take it, go to the credit, and now we write it as you run below the remote. You run below the remote. So the positioning is all based on classificasi, guys. Did you guys realize? So 650 here. And last step, you run below the only on the opposite. You run below for Ole on the opposite. Any amount is from your buku tonight, the third year. Okay, the third year for Uran is actually 280 ringgit. Okay, so take it. Then we can now officially start calculating our Serbana, how much you should receive for your Uran in the year itself. So, of course, total up your credit side first because that side is full, right? So, 800 plus 8130. 50 and 250. It would be 9,230. This is what we want for the both sides. Then you go in minus 700 and 280. It will equals to 8,250. It will equals to 8,250. Okay, so now we're going to continue for our part B. Okay, so there's no need for you to move down because I have received this question a lot from my students before. Did you do I need to post it over since they are Baki HP? Say no. If they are written Baki, then yes. But now since they are with their individual names, then there's no need for you to post it over already. Okay, eh? so just put it this way, closed. Correct is 8250. Alright, so we have finished with part A already. Just a reminder, later on we will use this U run. One Hey, sorry, 8250 to be at our hasil section called as Uran, but just take 8250, uh, nothing else.
Okay, Corey, uh, carry on, we're going to continue to our part B, which is our account collect. So account collect, right, is the basic type. Lah. You won't see it like um, how you do during your fall. There's so much things for your account collect, but here, no. Just the basic BB, bank, and HB. And moreover, yeah, I didn't see any pulangan or even discount determiner appearing inside the question, right? So it's the most basic type. BB, bank, HB. So just remember, every time account color surely will have these three things. BB, bank, HB. So go find for this three. Now, our T-shape is going to be just about uh, five rows long. Five. Ray hard five minutes. Uh, uh, I don't mind to Ray hard, but that would take me another one hour to finish up the entire thing. So I will just carry on. If you want to Ray hard, you Ray hard, okay? All right. So here, let's go on. Yeah, account kawalan belum bayar. Account kawalan belum bayar. Tomorrow got exam or the one you guys to sleep later. So I wanna finish as soon as possible, yeah. Okay, so account kawalan belum bayar. We're gonna start from Baki BB of course as a uh liability account, asset account, EP account, all same one. Leja always begin from Baki BB, but this one really can write BB already because it's by itself. So 2018, January 1st, Baki BB on the credit side. Bucky BB on the credit side. Okay, so go where to find the Bucky BB? Of course, at your Bucky area. Lo. So we want account belong bayar. Account belong bayar. 1,400. Uh, go ahead, copy it in. 1,400. After that, change your dates into December 31st. Both sides. Okay, change to December 31st. Both sides. What I said, uh, we're going to have BB bank and hp right so let's go ahead and put our bank out bank is going to be on the pembayaran right side of buku tunai right here okay so i want the one with the account belong bayar word do you see account belong bayar kedai dobi so take it if you don't want to keep it here you can just you know cut it off lah. Cut off, okay so one three five six zero cut off already bring it into your account kawalan towards the debit side because we paid mah, so hutang kepada pembekal akan berkurang. So one three five six zero. And now lastly, before I put baki HP lah, I will reserve a spot for our Berlian credit. But take note that you do not need to write the credit word. If you write credit word, you might get minus mark from these uh, examiner so the best is you don't write the credit word just berlian will do because whatever we have inside abb is already meaning secara credit berhutang so berlian not okay then go ahead and have your baki hp underneath of the back so hp for the abb is equals to abb yeah is gonna be this one here one one six zero one one six zero take it and we're gonna close all right so let's find out what is the billion then we're gonna add it, it together with the billion bank we have inside the bombay rent section so one three five six oh plus one one six zero sorry this is rm i forgot to write one four seven two zero for both sides one four seven two zero Minus 1,400, what is your Berlian credit going to be? Berlian, ah, Berlian credit. Okay, so it's equals to 13,320. If you can get this, then no problem already. Let's go ahead and add this to our Berlian. 13320 over here in your pembayaran. Right? So what is your jumlah Berlian? Okay, so what is your jumlah Berlian? 1,200 plus 13,320. Jumlah belian equals to 14,520. 1,4,5,2,0. Okay, so we're done. Now we can officially start with our account perdagangan already. So do you remember we have the other, uh, have the color for the account perdagangan? So I use my favorite color, purple, okay? So I'm going to highlight this, the belian kedai dobi, 14,520. I'm also going to highlight the upah kedai dobi, 
2750. Now, so far, I have gotten two Gedai Dobi items from the Burn by Ren section. And moving on to our Burn Narima Unsight. Burn Narima Unsight, we also have Hasil Gedai Dobi, but that's the only one we have. Lah. Okay, so once highlighted the center section, now we're going to go up to the Baki area and you will see that we have an inventory Kedai Dobi. 1,900 and 1,700. So their usage uh, is going to be our awal dengan inventory up here. So total, I'm going to count a bit of how many Kedai Dobi stuffs we have for the account perdagangan. It's going to be 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, and 6. Total to 6 items meant for account perdagangan. Okay, so I'm going to end it with account perdagangan. Lah. Then moving on for D and E, I'll just guide you guys through. Then we will move on to Bob 7 already. Bob 7 is very fast lah, for my explanation. So you all don't have to worry that I can't finish it. It will be very fast, okay? I'll make it fast. So for part C, Let's go on. A couple dagangan will resume back to the penyata format already. So please uh, don't think that, hey teacher, then now I'm mixing T format and penyata format already. Lo. Actually, it's not because the A and B is actually leja. They are leja. Leja only got one format, which is the T shape. Well, otherwise, you say penyata kewangan, then it's the account perdagangan, account untung rugi. You are free to choose penyata format or T format. But I would recommend to do all penyata because at the exam time, they will you actually accept penyata more than T format. Okay, so we do penyata format. Okay, title, you're right by yourself, uh, account perdagangan. I just put like short form first account perdagangan then you all go on to copy in the rest of them okay you all go on and copy the rest yeah now for our account perdagangan we will need about let's see yeah uh, we shall need about three columns okay i will keep it to be three in case we ever need it if you want to put two also can uh, by the time you need the third one then you add on some more okay so i will keep it as three yeah three rm columns All right. If we need to prepare the whole PKK, we need to record the inventory up here, Kedai Dobi. Yes, correct. The inventory up here, right? No matter what journey's inventory up here, it will always be SS Master 1. Yeah, so even if there's a Kedai Dobi work, we're still going to put to PKK. Just like how you usually do your normal Milikan Tunggal Pelarasan question, inventory up here, other than putting at account perdagangan, we also will put it into PKK. So two times one. Yeah, correct. So let's start, yeah? Starting from Jualan, but wait, no Jualan, no. this question is Hasil Kedai Dobi, so we follow lo. Hasil Kedai Dobi. We don't change it, yeah? Because you know why? Uh, Dobi, ma, Dobi is, you know, laundry shop, or they don't sell anything, okay? They sell service, so Hasil, lah, okay? Hasil Kedai Dobi makes more sense than Jualan. So our Hasil Kedai Dobi is equals to 28460. Just copy from your Penerima Unsight, put it to the last column. Put it to the last column, 28460. And after that, okay, after our hasil kedai dobi, then we will take minus cost jolet. Now, the difference here we have for the club dan persatuan type of account perdagangan, right, is that we will really do our cost jalan just the usual type of items we have. Inventory our belian, and inventory arcade. So anything that is for kedai dobi, belanja kedai dobi, we will keep it after we calculated the cost jalan. Okay, we will keep it after the cost jalan. So this is how we arrange. We start by inventory hour. We start by inventory hour. Take it from your Baki area. This is a 1,900. Now, definitely, if you feel like you want to write Kedai Dobi, go ahead. Lah. But I don't think that is worth your time. So, just put inventory hour will do. Okay, 1,900. After that, we will have our plus Berlian. Plus Berlian. And the Berlian, now we want to take the brand new one after you add Sachara credit, which is the 14520. 14520, take it, add it with your inventory hour. Alright, so 1900 plus 14520 is equal to 16420, my right? Okay, and then now uh, minus inventory up here. Minus inventory up here. 
So the inventory arc here is equals to 1,700 in bracket. 1,700 in bracket. So we are getting 14,720. Now, the good thing uh, about account perdagangan in this chapter, right, is that we don't need to label all the uh, cost barang untuk dijual lah, cost jara, no need, oh, no need to label all that at all, just keep it blank like this. And now, underneath of your 14720, we will add on all the belanja kedai dobi. So, where are the belanja kedai dobi? We have only two, which is upah kedai dobi and as well as the kada bayaran. Kedai Dobi. So only two types. We will add on because this section is still the courses, right? The belanges. Okay, so plus. Plus. Upa Kedai Dobi. Upa Kedai Dobi. 2750. And one more is Kadar Bayaran Kedai Dobi. Kadar Bayaran. Kedai Dobi. Okay, so this one here is 2880. Once you're done, add them all together, bring it to the last column. So you can find out whether it's Untong ataupun Rugi Kedai Dobi. So we have it 14720 plus 2750 and 2880. The jumlah here we have is equals to 20,350. Okay, so you guys put the bracket on by yourself because right, this is meant to be minus, right? Okay, minus it off. 28460 minus 20,350. What can you guys get for your um, Kedai Dobi here? Is it Untung or is it Rugi? So from numbers, okay, obviously you can tell this is actually a Untung Kedai Dobi. So answer 8,110. So close it. Untung Kedai Dobi. So later on, don't forget about this, okay? Your untong kedai dobi is meant to be as a hasil. So in your own exercises, you can always label it. But during the exam, right, you don't need to label it because then it will kind of affect oh, what the examiner sees. So you can use pencil to write small, small H circle. Later, you erase it off. Okay, yeah? so now that's it for our part C, account perdagangan kedai dobi. Now for part D, account pendapatan dan perbelanjaan. Okay, part D. Yeah. I don't think you have enough space, right? Because this is the entire page already, A, B, C. So you can start a new page for your part D. I will only tell you guys about the pendapatan hasil area. Okay, so you just need to draw a D and then with a the line. Then you put two RM columns. Uh, title you write yourself uh, okay part d copy from the question we do so then uh, of course the title must begin from pendapatan hasil title must begin from pendapatan hasil like this so why i want to start here even though i say i don't want to do part d with you guys right but i still gotta make sure that you did copy this in so every time when i do pendapatan hasil right i must make sure that all the extra hasil that we found before this which is from part a part b part c we'll copy them in so what are the extra hasil we have part a the extra hasil is u run eight two five zero so i'll take it okay take the u run put into my pendapatan hasil 8250. Okay, continue. For part B, do I have any hasil or not? Part B is not. Part B is a account column, so no need to look at it. We will look at our part C, which is the account perdagangan for kedai dobi. We have gotten untung kedai dobi, right? So correct, we gotta put it under pendapatan hasil. So untung kedai dobi. Untung kedai dobi. 8,110. So other than these two, you shouldn't have any problems already because everything else is going to copy from your question paper. So all the hasil symbol that I have put down for you all, you are left with another two more to copy. And for belanja, you will have the 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7. Sorry, is it just 7? 1, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7. 7 types of belanja. Yeah. Okay, yeah. so let's see. Uh, in account perdagangan club dan persatuan belanja, we also plus usually minus, right? No, no, no. Uh, usually is minus, yes. But here, right, the reason why we plus is because it's together with your cost jalan. 
So we will jumlahkan all the belanja together. Then one shot you minus out from your hasil. That's why here is plus. Because uh, the answer is cost jalan, right? We continue to add on. So we get a bigger number for the belanja. Yeah. Uh, one thing need to record into belanja pengendalian. Belanja pengendalian. Uh, actually, belanja pengendalian is this two already. Yeah, so you, you guys don't need to go and write plus belanja pengendalian. There's no need for it. You can just directly put the journey's belanja pengendalian for your kedai dobi. Okay, so I didn't bother writing that because it's extra. So we don't need to waste our time on that manner. Okay, yeah, guys, so that's all for the account perdagangan and also the pendapatan hasil section. I managed to put in the two extra stuffs for you all. Lah. So the remainder is going to be copying from your buku tonight area. Just come in and then you should find lebihan ataupun kurangan. Okay, so I'm going to wrap up part 6 here. If there's any question, you guys can leave it at chat. Later, I will reply to you all when I see it. So now, I want to carry on to explain for my part 7. Okay, guys, so let's go back to empty piece of paper you can continue to the next page yeah so i just explained finish for about six now i'm gonna move on to about seven by the way if you guys would like to have this uh, handwritten notes by me i will upload it underneath of this live stream video as a pdf so you all can just print out if you guys want lah. but i think you guys already written by yourself so there's no need to print if you want to save it you can save it lah. okay i will upload it to my uh, live stream below of the description box okay all right so let's move on to bab seven now for bab seven for a kanan course i'm only going to be covering 7.1 which is the one with a format okay so 7.1 uh, is extremely easy why is that because we are all talking about cost sahaja now actually last time right bab 7 uh, have another name one okay we actually called it as cost pengeluaran but uh, now it's called as per ekanan cost okay so i'm gonna write the old name for you so it's easily understand so you guys put cost pengeluaran Okay, now there's only one focus of this chapter 7 is about kilang. Okay, it's about kilang. So why is that? Because cost stands for belanja. Okay, cost stands for belanja. What costs you? Means you spend money, ma, belanja. Lah. Well, pengeluaran, you think about where. Where you produce. What is the location that you will do producing? Leh? Okay. Uh, hi from Sing <laughs> SG. SG means Singapore. Hi. Hi. Okay. Let's continue. Yeah. So cost stands for belanja. Pengeluaran stands for where you produce. So pengeluaran means production. Okay. But of course, I wouldn't say a production itself as a... Uh, I want to know the production cost. But where do you do your production? It will be mainly on your kila. So that's why if you match these two words together, belanja... Kilang means that we only want any expenses that is related to kilang sahaja when you are preparing account cost pengeluaran. Okay, so belanja kilang we have a few types, so I'm gonna list them out for you. But um, I cannot tell you guys the process of it. Example now, okay, example. Uh, I want to make bread. Okay, but guys, don't be so detailed. I'll just give you guys example, right? I also don't know how to make bread, but I kind of know about the, the basic uh, ingredients about it. So bread, okay, bread. You guys know what is the ingredients now? If you know, you can tell me, lah, okay? Then we can make breads together. So bread now, okay, we will use what? We need flour, eggs, and milk. Okay, let's assume that's just these three, lah, okay? Flour, milk, Eggs, I kind of double the sequence already, but it's okay. Just this three, okay? Flour, milk, and eggs. This, in the end, we call it as bahan menta. Okay, now this is going to be the first type of belanja, first type of cost that I need to spend on making on the production. So I need to buy bahan menta first, our raw materials, in order to start the production. Uh, oh yeah, still got yeast, right? But it's okay, like, guys, I lazy to write the yeast out. So we all just stick with this three, okay? Basic, basic first, okay? So bahan menta is going to be our first group. Now this bahan menta, right? You see, I got these three types, right? When I buy, there will be a bullion bahan menta. 
when I return the spoiled eggs back to the supplier, there will be a pulangan berlian bahan mentah. So this entire bahan section for the cost, yeah, is gonna have a cost jualan formula inside. Okay, so I always tell my students when you are preparing this section, cost bahan langsung, which is the first belanja we need to do. Okay, the first expenses we're gonna have cost bahan langsung. You're gonna start using cost jalan format. So what is cost jalan format? We will begin from inventory awal. Inventory awal. Berlian. Now of course you won't directly plus if there is pulangan lah. But if there is no pulangan, then you will plus. So, but if there is, then you will minus pulangan berlian at the bottom. Okay, minus pulangan berlian. Then you look out whether you have any angkutan masuk insurance atas belian or even duty or not so just these three yeah angkutan duty insurance so the u is going to be slot out why because upa stands for human right okay now human any payment about human that's going to be our second type of belanja kilang so we don't put it inside the cost bahalang so we want anything related to bahan sahaja so angkutan masuk is the first type angkutan masuk yeah, sorry. Angkutan masuk. Duty or cukai. Okay, if you see any of this, same lah. Duty or cukai is tax. And then we have insurance. But this must be insurance atas belian. So here, right, I just want to tell you guys, usually lah, insurance atas belian don't come on. Very, very less chance y'all will see, right? Even in cost jalan also, you hardly see insurance atas belian. Most of the time, they like to come up with angkutan masuk and also duty ataupun cukai. So these two, yeah, without the word bahan langsung, you will still put it under cost bahan langsung. So what's the reason for it? Because now, instead of buying products we will be making them so the only cost where i will spend for angkutan masuk or even duty or even insurance atas belian is the process of buying bahan mentah so i wouldn't have any buying purchasing of finished products you understand so all is pengeluaran sahaja so here i'm going to add on the tree to our belian area lah. so after that what we will do last step we are going to be minusing inventory up here minus inventory up here so of course uh, all this inventory our belian and all you must see the word bahan langsung at the back lah. except for this tree no need for bahan langsung word at the back but still when we actually write it out there's no need to present the bahan langsung word because you are already at that section itself okay so this is our first group now continue after we have bought the flour, the milk, and the eggs, okay, add on lah, yeast, uh, make sense of it, okay, yeast. We have bought all the ingredients already. Now, what are we lacking of? I put it on the table, then it will become bread. Uh, is it? Uh, okay, maybe you guys are thinking, uh, oven lah. But still, even if you buy oven, I put all the ingredients on the table, will it automatically walk to the oven? No ma, okay, I need someone to make the dough, okay? I need workers isn't it so this is our second type of belanja kilang so we call them buru langsung okay second type is buru okay put underneath uh, workers but must be direct workers some say direct direct means that they will be involved in the production work itself so without them then i cannot produce the bread so also when i'm not producing the bread then i don't need to hire them you see that's why they are direct type of workers so the indirect type of workers right will be those that are like uh say accountant working in the office one nothing related to kilang or uh, even we say okay supervisor they are even though in the kilang but will they touch the dough okay they help you put the oven no ma they just supervise okay they just look around whether the workers are doing their job or not so that's why Buru here must be all with the word langsung. Otherwise, they just say pekerja kilang can also be considered under buru. Okay, eh? so this is the second group. Kos buru langsung. Kos buru langsung. Jenis will have pekerja kilang. Buru langsung. 
operator kila. Okay, now, uh, all of them, right, I'm missing a word, actually. I'm supposed to have the word gaji or upa at the front, but the reason why I didn't do so is because, I'll tell you, any, okay, they just say buru langsung also can put under here. And so, see whether they want to add the upa or the gaji word at the front or not. So, upa or gaji also works the same. Now, I'll say, uh, every time I tell my students that operator kilang seems like such a high position jobs right but actually it's not okay because operator kilang mainly what they do is to operate the machines and all the electricity stuff in the in the factory itself so if now my factory is closed i'm not trying to produce any products at all do i need them to come in to work do i need to pay them no okay i pay my workers according to their working hours so here if they don't work they don't get paid so operator kilang also the same. So the ones that are higher position, right, would be just these two. Penyalia, pengurus, supervisor, and the manager. So if these two have the word kilang at the back, you don't put here. There will be another position for them because they are fixed workers. They don't get paid according to working hours. They will have a fixed pay. So we don't put buru so Okay, eh? so let's move on to the third type of expenses for the kilang. Okay, now the third type is actually what we call as copyrights, okay? But you see, actually copyrights, right? Got a lot of journeys one. I cannot list them all out for you, lah, but I'll tell you the popular ones that they always come out with. Uh, we call them as Belanger Langsong. Okay, we call them as Belanger Langsong. So the types that we have usually will come out, yeah? Is patent. Patent. Hak Chipta and Royalty. Now, of course, the, they are all the type, same type. They are all copyrights purposes, but then uh, for different types of items. So, like example, patent, right? Patent is for um, your original work. You say a framework you have drawn for the building. So, before building the building, building the building, before you build the building, that sounds a bit weird, okay? So, before you build the building, you need to draw the structure right okay including all the ingredients you use for the building itself so all these are uh, will be written on a piece of paper so you want to prevent from people stealing your your work okay you gotta go and patent can okay uh patented work will not get uh copied or uh, even used by someone else so before someone else steal your work you go and patent can then you won't get of getting stolen of your work lah, okay so that's the purpose of a Belanger Langsong. So I would say, right, Belanger Langsong is kind of like a one-time thing. So sometimes question don't have Belanger Langsong is totally normal. Lah. So you just look out for these three words. If you have them inside the question, then yes, you will have the Belanger Langsong. But if you don't see any of them, then your Langsong section will only be ended up with number one and number two. That's good enough for you to produce your bread already. Okay, so uh, Belanger Langsong is just to check on whether people will steal your recipe or not. So I faster go and register a hard chipter or a patent like that. Okay, so once you have gotten all the lang song, yeah, you see the keyword is lang song. Okay, once we have gotten all of the lang song items, we will add it all together since they are all belanger, you see. Okay, all the lang song added together, it will form something called cost prima. Okay, it will be called as cost prima. So what exactly is cost prima? Cost prima in English is called primary cost. Primary cost means the first, um, uh, first amount you have to spend. Okay, primary cost. First amount you spend before you officially make your products you have to spend this money first okay so you think about all those sewer kilang of course that is gonna be something mandatory but we have another group for it but here is talking about the product itself it will be included inside the product then we call it cost prima so that's why all the lung song added together you will get this name cost prima so afterwards okay after cost prima we will continue to find out more belanges that is a constant one okay like those kada by a rent sewer they will have a group of name that's called cost overhead cost overhead this is our fourth section okay this is our fourth section so cost overhead right otherwise known as cost the top cost the top but i wouldn't say it okay cost overhead is the term we use in chapter 7.1 
Okay, in 7.1, you will use cost overhead. But if let's say uh, they want to connect this question, 7.1 with 7.2, which is Tite Pulang model, then you will see cost overhead as a cost deduct. Okay, if it's in 7.2, we call it cost deduct. So any types of fixed costs, we will put it over here. So you see all the differences. Whatever langsung, you throw to the upper section. Okay, whatever langsung, throw to the upper section. We have three, right? Baha langsung, buru langsung, and belanja langsung. But if you are for cost overhead, then you can put in anything tidak langsung. Example, upah tidak langsung. But you all know actually there's another word, right? Tak langsung, same, same one. Tidak, tak, same thing. So upah tak langsung. Any or even buru tak langsung, you just put it under cost overhead because they are fixed. They won't be included in the production work, but still they are part of the workers in your kilang. So they get a fixed fee. That's why it's called tak langsung, tidak langsung. So other than that, we also have penyelia, pengurus, but make sure you see the word kilang at the back. So anything that you want to put into this format, right, must have the word kilang, must be related to your factory. Uh, if it's not related to factory, it mentioned per jabat, then we don't put it over here already. Because office and factory, different sections, but different areas, so of course we're going to split it out. Because here we only want the production cost related to kilang sahaja. Okay, furthermore, we also have this susut minai. But guys, okay, susun nilai uh, is the most trickiest one because a lot of students always get stuck at here. Now, susun nilai applies to all of our asset bukan semasa, isn't it? Now, I think about it, ABS, uh, we have seven types, okay? What? Kenderaan, alatan pejabat, we have berabot, we have uh, more like, lengkapan, uh, we have machine, we have jentera, and so on, so on. So then these ones are... Uh, all will have susun nilai, but for kilang sahaja, you can only take from this range, jentera, machine. These two types, I can say pretty much confirm is for kilang, but if they want to come up for susun nilai kenderaan, perabot, then there must be a kilang word there. If you want to put kenderaan, perabot, then you must make sure at the back, there must have a kilang word. So this kenderaan and the perabot is meant for kilang usage. But if they just say kenderaan, ah, then that one is for pejabat already. Because why would a kilang need kenderaan? Kilang is to produce products. So the place where we use cars ah, is the shop itself, where we need to deliver the goods to our customers. So office, ah, that one is for pejabat. Okay, yeah? So be aware for the susut nilai part. And sometimes, right, even for susut nilai machine, yeah, they will ask you to split between kilang dengan pejabat. If that's so, then you follow lah, the ratio. They say kilang machine is 3, 1. Means that kilang is 3 over 4, machine is 1 over 4. This is how you're going to split for the susut nilai uh, between the production and the office. Okay, now other than this, right, we still have more types. Uh, in this chapter, we have this thing called alat, alat kecil. But the term that I will be using is called belanja. Alat, alat kecil. Now, I believe in school, right, your school teacher would be teaching you all to write susut nilai alat, alat kecil. Or even when you look at your uh, answer sheet, they might also be writing it as susut nilai. But I personally don't agree with that because alat, alat kecil uh, is all the tools that we use in the kilang okay like screwdrivers and stuff like that so they shouldn't have a susut nilai instead it's kind of like alat to this case we will spend it away so i like to look at it as a belanja instead of susut nilai so of course both of them are accepted just my personal preference i would prefer to write it as belanja alat alat kecil so the method to count is the same as the alat to list just now we did inventory hour plus belian, tolak inventory akhir. So you get your belanja ala-ala kecil. Okay, so then other than that, then it's all those kada bayaran ah, and insurance already. Lo. So you just need to make sure that this that you take must be of kilang sahaja. Alright, so once we have done with the fourth section, cost overhead, all these yeah, are meant to plus together, guys. Okay, no minus, yeah. One, two, three, four, all add together. And now to the fifth section. Okay, fifth section is where we're going to take plus kerja dalam proses awal 
minus kerja dalam proses akhir. So, finally, this is the fifth section of cost, okay? We will get our cost pengeluaran. So, what is exactly a KDP hour and a KDP akhir? Yeah? KDP hour is the kerja dalam proses that we didn't get to finish the previous year. So, isn't it previous year cannot finish? Now, I can do, do it already. Eh? So, hour will be added into part of the cost. Huh? But if it's this year that I couldn't process it, then I will leave it for the coming year. We will do minus. So, the concept is like inventory hour and inventory akhir. Lah. So, you just put it at the very last section. Then you will get your answer. Cost pengeluaran already. So, this is the format for your cost pengeluaran. Basically. Okay, so everything at, except for the last section, KDP arcade must be minus. So the most uh, most frequent time, uh, most common mistake that students will do, right, is to minus cost overhead. Because you're very used to plus hasil minus belanja. But this chapter, no. Everything at except for KDP arcade or inventory arcade. You will do the minus. Uh. Other than that, all is plus. Okay, uh? so I'm finished talking about this section already. Now, moving on, I will talk about the account perdagangan. So, you all just use the remaining spaces. You put a small one, uh, AKP. Now, for our account cost pengelaran question, there might be a part B asking for AKP. That's to find untung ataupun rugi kasa. So, you just do the usual way. But except that cost jalan will have some slight changes. Okay, You will still see jalan. But the keyword here is masi barang siap. Means finished product, only you can sell. So, jalan, barang siap. And underneath of it, you write minus cost jalan. Minus cost jalan. Follow the step, we have inventory hour, but the word barang siap comes with it. So take from a question, now, make sure you got barang siap only you put into here. That underneath of inventory hour is the key point. We will take the cost pengeluaran, put over here. Okay, the cost pengeluaran will then be put into our account perdagangan as a part of cost jualan. So you see, what did it replace Yeah, It has replaced your bullion already. Because last time we used to buy barang siap, but now we don't need to buy anymore. We will make it ourselves. So the cost jalan will come from cost pengeluaran mainly. So we will add this into our inventory, our barang siap. Then last step, tolak inventory up here. Barang siap. You get your cost jalan, then untung ataupun rugi kasa. Ends. Now guys, if they ever ask for account perdagangan dan untung rugi, ya, now if dan untung rugi, then you will continue with your untung ataupun rugi kasa. Continue with that. Tambah hasil, tolak, belanja, you get untung ataupun rugi bersih. But where are we going to get the hasil and the belanja from? The hasil and the belanja is going to be getting from all the Perjabat ratios. Okay, now do you remember just now as I say for Kada Bayaran insurance, they will give you ratio to split between Kilang and Perjabat, right? Example, I say 3 to 1. Kilang is 3, Perjabat is 1. So how are you going to get the hasil and belanja for this section here? You will take the 1. 1 over 4. All the Perjabat you calculate already is meant for this section right here. Okay, yeah, guys, so I already finished up for the explanation for part 7. Now, I'm just going to explain the question and the answering will be left for you. Lah, okay, now later on, after I finish this live stream, I will put the jawaban at my description box and also my handwritten notes here to the description box. So, if you want to print it out, you want to save it, it's up to you. Lah, okay, all right, so let's go on to our getas soalan. Okay, let's go on to our getas soalan. Question number 2 here, yeah. Okay, now this question is quite long because they actually request for account perdagangan dan untung rugi, which is quite unusual because usually exam, right, they will stop at AKP. So you got to be very careful about it. If they ever ask for untung rugi, means that any hasil belanja of perjabat, you will have to help them calculate. So I will give them back the normal hasil and belanja symbol. Now, if you guys watch back to my previous explanation for part 7, right, I used to put this hasil symbol, oh sorry, no hasil symbol, belanja symbol for cost overhead. But since that now, Untung Rugi wants to take back their place already. So I will give the belanja symbol back to them. While for my cost overhead, I will put this symbol. 
B with the square bracket. Okay, guys, B with the square bracket is for cost overhead. Now, you guys ready with your highlighters because I will be using it right now. Okay, so take out one of the color that you like, just one is enough. The color that you most like, well, my favorite. Okay, I'll take out, I think, the pastel one. Okay, all right, so I'm gonna highlight all the Bahan Langsung words. Okay, start from up here. Do you see Angkutan Masuk? Now, even though they didn't mention Bahan Langsung, but I said already, if you see Angkutan Masuk, you see duty, you see insurance atas belian. All of these are meant for Bahan Langsung. So I'm going to take this Angkutan Masuk and highlight it. Okay, so this is my first item for Bahan Langsung. Continue, we have a Belian Bahan Langsung. Belian Bahan Langsung. Go on, Pulangan Bahan Langsung. And then there's no more Bahan Langsung things already, right? Okay, just this three. Now, uh, every time uh, when I ask about highlighting Bahan Langsung, I ask my students, hey, uh, still got anything else Bahan Langsung or not? Surely got that one student will tell me, Upa Langsung. Now, dear, Upa Langsung uh, is for workers. I don't want my workers fee into my Bahan Langsung. So split it, okay? Upa Langsung is for cost bureau Langsung, not for Bahan Langsung. So we're going to split. I only need three of these highlighted inside my list okay now continue we go down to the maklumat tambahan did you see inventory pada 31st august this is where you can find all the inventory up here but i don't need all of them yet i just need for the bahan langsung so i will highlight the one with the bahan langsung okay so total we have found one two three four four items for bahan langsung section but why it feels like weird weird one don't have inventory awal wo. okay so that's because we haven't read the solan at on top okay so we gotta go back and read it they say memulakan operasi pada 1st september so it turns out that we are a new business that's why don't have inventory awal okay new the other inventory awal so it's very normal. We don't have any our items. So okay, then just go with it. We have already found all of our bahan langsung. So moving on, we're gonna locate our cost bureau langsung. So I will use my red pen to write to make it more obvious. So cost bureau langsung ranges from any gaji pekerja kilang, operator kilang, or even just bureau langsung. So you'll look up for that. So for here in the list, you guys should see the upa langsung, just like I just mentioned. Okay, so now your label k dot bureau dot l you just need to have this no need to write the entire thing like don't waste your time okay so cost k dot buru you spell out and then dot l because why buru and b right can also be bahan ma so you don't want it to be mixed up so write buru out so one here any other things okay from the look of it we have a gaji so i'm not sure whether the gaji will be split out or not but then uh, they didn't say any gaji, kilang or stuff like that. Whoa. So I will just leave it here first. So far, we already found upah langsung. Okay, found upah langsung. And then next up, we need belanja langsung, right? Three types. Hak cipta, patent, royalty. This three. Okay, so do you see royalty here? Okay, so we're going to take it. This is our belanja dot L. Belanja dot L. Okay, so got it, it already, all the langsung already highlighted, already labeled. So now we're going to start with our pelarasan. Now remember, yeah, because this chapter, Bab 7, tidak perlukan PKK. Okay, we don't need any PKK at all. So avoid asset, avoid liability, and avoid EP. No need to care about the asset, liability, and EP. We just need all what? Belanja, belanja, belanja. And also the jualan lah if we need to prepare account for diagonal. Okay, so let's move on to our belarasan right now. Okay, belarasan eh? Come down. Second point onwards. Okay, second point onwards. It says, belanja, belanja, belum bayar pada 31st August 2020. So we have belum bayar of kada bayaran. Belanja up. Since it's belong by up, means both also need to be plus. Okay, so we're going to go up into Kada Bayar, right? I'm going to put it by the side, okay? Bracket, yeah? It was 10,100. Now, I want to add 2420. 2420. What is the new number now? Cut it off. 
the latest number for our Kada Bayaran is equals to 12,520. 12,520. Done with Kada Bayaran. No labeling, ah, because we need to split it with Kilang and Pajabat later on. Okay, so just go on. Next one is Belanja Arm plus 1,220. So Belanja Arm is right here. We have a 16,500 before. So put it in a bracket. 16,500 plus 1,220. So we replaced it. Belanja Arm now is equal to 17,720. Okay, so we have done with our Belanja Belombaya. Finish already. There's no need for you to label LS because we're not doing PKK. So moving on, we're going to go into our part 3. Okay, Sehingga 31st August, insurance telah dibayar terdahulu sebanyak 100 ringgit. So terdahulu means in advance or means early. So what are we supposed to do if it's early then? Okay, if it's early, then we should be doing a minus, of course, okay, we're going to be doing minus. So, minus for 100 ringgit up from your insurance. So, insurance was 4,900. 4,900. Now that we have a third ahulu, 100, so just minus ah, 100. So, latest amount for our insurance is equals to 4,800. No labeling at all, yeah, because now we don't know whether Kilang is how much, Bojawa is how much. So we're just going to keep it like this and we're done with point 3 already. Okay, moving on for point 4. Kada bayaran dan belanja am diagikan antara kilang dengan pejabat mengikut nispa 3 to 1. So we already expected this because we have account untung rugi, you see. So they will ask us to split between pejabat and kilang. Now, kilang, we use this symbol, B bracket. If it's pejabat, we use the B circle. Okay, now feels like a bit tight on space, right? So why not? I will write it over here instead, this empty spot. If not, uh, you cannot fit in all the uh, splitting, right? Okay, so I'm going to put for this is Kada Bayaran and Belanja. Ah. I put like this, yeah? Uh, Kilang. Perjabat. So you can just, you know, no need to keep repeating all the kila and the punjaba word. Lo. Okay, so just like this. So for kada by right, we want three, one, right? So three, yeah, sorry, sorry. No, 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 we don't put up there, okay? Put here. Three, one, so it's over four. Equals to Equals to So let's split. So for kada by right, 12,520 times 3 over 4, you guys should get 9390. You'll check and see whether you can get 9390 or not there. Eh? And then for Pajabat, okay, Pajabat is the remainder of course. 12,520 minus 9390 minus 9390. It will equal to 3130. This is for our Kada Bayaran. Okay, this is for our Kada Bayaran. Next, after Kada Bayaran, they also say Belanja Am. So I'm going to put Belanja Am. So you don't need to put the 3 over 4 and 1 over 4 anymore because we already do it for Kada Bayaran. It's the same thing. Lah. So you just need to take the number Belanja Am 17720 times 3 over 4 times 3 over 4, you will get it to be 13,290 for Kilang and the remainder 17720 minus 13,290 equals to 4430. So Kada Bayaran and Belanja Am both settled. Okay, both settled. Moving on. Okay, now moving on. Point number 5 says, Insurance dan gaji dibahagikan antara kilang dengan pejabat pada kada 41. So, we are going to have insurance gaji to be splitted out with the nisba that is 4 for kilang, 1 for pejabat. So, means that is 4 over 5, 1 over 5. For the both of them. 
Okay, so let's calculate, yeah? Insurance now is equals to 4,800 times 4 over 5. You should get it to be 3840. 3840. And then for the insurance for Perjabat, le, remainder, 4,800 minus 3840, we get a 960 for the Perjabat. 960 for the Perjabat. And now lastly, for Gaji, Gaji didn't have any changes, right? We just copy the ticket. 20,100 times 4 over 5, which is going to be 16,080. 16,080. While for the Pajabat there, Pajabat minus, hold on, yeah, is equal to 4,020. So can you guys catch up? Everything good? You guys let me know at the chat, yeah? Alright, so now that we already finished splitting between the Kilang and the Pajaba, you no longer need them inside the list. So you can go on and cut them off, lah. okay? All of them. You don't need it anymore. In case you go and take it again, yeah? So we're gonna just... Eh, sorry, sorry. Uh, hold on, yeah? For lunch, ah. Okay, so four of them cut off already. So now what's left is gonna be our remaining points are very fast. Okay, we finish it, then the class will end. Okay, so come point number five insurance dan gaji dibahagikan antara. Eh, sorry, did I read the wrong one? Point five is done already. Sorry, yeah. Point five is done. Point six machine disusut nilai pada kada 10% atas cost dan kenderaan 5% mengikut kaedah baki berkurangan. So we are gonna have machine to be susut nilai 10% on cost. So cost is means that cost times percentage. Okay, cost times percentage. While baki berkurangan means cost minus SNT times percentage so you know that right okay so let's go ahead and find for the susut nilai machine at kenderaan so what i will usually do when it comes to this chapter uh, i will make it fast by replacing the kenderaan and machine to become sn straight away so i don't need to write my own term anymore i just need to put the sn at the front then that's done because we don't need abs right okay so i'm going to replace it cut off the cost don't need that Okay, now let's begin. For kenderaan, they said to use, oh sorry, machine, yeah? They said to use 10%, right? So 10% is our favorite percentage because all you need to do is just to cover one of the zero away. So from the initial 77,000, now it will become 7,700. So I believe I just now mentioned that machine should be belongs at the kilang because it helps you in making products. Right? So our symbol for it is the cost overhead one be in a squarey bracket be in a squarey bracket so while for kenderaan leh, then i definitely cannot put it into kilang law because they didn't mention about kilang and stuff like that so cars vehicles should be meant for the pejabat so therefore we will be using the b symbol for it but let's calculate lah, okay they say baki berkurangan lah. 41,000 minus snt is there any snt in the question I say, eh, even though they asked me to do baki berkurangan, but there's no SNT war. So never mind lah. No need to minus SNT because it's non-existent. You know why go no SNT or not? Because we baru memulakan perniagaan. How are you going to find SNT? Eh, we didn't even start last year. We started this year mah. So there's no O amount. That's why right. just take the 41,000 multiplied by the percentage, which is 5%. So 41,000 times 5% would equal to or equals to 2050. So put the belanger symbol B circle that is meant for pejabat, account perdagangan. Alright, now we have finished with the susunilai already. That's pretty much it. Then let's move on to the next point. After SN, we have her. Permintaan terhadap pelitup muka bertambah apabila kerajaan menetapkan pemakaian pelitup, uh, which is the mask, yeah adalah wajib berkuat kuasa mulai 1st August. Oleh itu, pihak pengurusan membuat keputusan untuk mengambil pekerja sambilan. Terdapat 5 orang pekerja sambilan yang dibayar upah pada kadar RM5 sejam. Now guys, just one thing you guys ask yourself. Should I put this upah pekerja sambilan to be at my 
buru langsung or is it a cost overhead? So the difference between these two are buru langsung meant for temporary workers. They work, they get paid. Cost overhead, they even don't work, they can apply for a uh, paid leave. So they take leave, they still get paid. Now that's the difference, yeah? So what do you guys think about all this upa pekerja sambilan? Should I put at buru langsung or should I put at cost overhead? So that's the real question you have to ask yourself. <laughs> Before calculating, la, you need to understand. Ma. Since they already said, it's for the permintaan. Now, the permintaan won't keep going on. Like now, right, the demand for masks is lesser already. If you compare to when it started with COVID, right? Okay, COVID started, everybody wants to buy masks. So the demand is high. Now that it slowly slows down already. So everybody have masks at home. They don't run out of it. So the demand will get Lesser. Do I still need pekerja sambilan by then? We don't need already. So actually, they are under cost buru langsung. That's correct. Okay, so let's go ahead and write it out. Okay, upah pekerja sambilan. Upah pekerja sambilan is for k dot buru. Yeah, sorry, spelling error. K dot buru dot l. Cost buru langsung. Good job, guys. You all know how to identify. Eh? So, equals to, let's find out what is the amount we're going to pay them. Since that they say uh, they're going to be paid 5 ringgit surjam, right? Each day is 8 hours. So, we take RM5 times 8 jam. And since the 8 jam is 1 day, ma, they are going to be working for 20 days. So, we just need to times dua puluh hari so the amount is going to be your upah pekerja sambilan just like that okay guys let's jumlahkan ya 5 times 8 times 20 is equals to 5 times 8 times 20 uh sorry and also times 5 i missed out the lima orang already so if you just do 5 times 8 times 20, right, you will get 800. But it's wrong because we have lima orang pekerja. But you see the way we calculate, right, eight times eight, uh, 5 times 8 times 20 is for one person. So you need to have the lima orang at the back. Lah, okay? Lima orang at the back. So equals to 4,000 ringgit. Okay, so we have already finished with all our maklumat tambahan. That's all ready. So what's left is that we need to split between what is for pejabat, what is not for pejabat that is meant for the kilang. So the langsung one, right, you guys don't have to worry already because we already labeled all of them. So for bahan langsung, we only have one, two, three, four. Four of them. Okay, bahan langsung only got four. While for buru langsung, we got two. Upa langsung. Upah pekerja sambilan, two of them. And now for belanja langsung, we have royalty. And that's it for your cost pre -mark. You will count based on those. And now we need to find for cost overhead and also the belanja pejabat. Lah. But I want to say we have one more step to do before we go to labeling. That is the alat alat kecil inside the inventory pada 31st August. So remember how we did for the previous bab 6, right? Also got inventory up here, alat tulis, but we cannot just leave it unattended. We need to do it, right? So if it's up here, means that we need to minus. Inventory up here is always to minus 1. So we will take this 6,100 out from the Berlian alat alat kecil. Minus off already. 8550 minus 6100, it will be left with 2450. So what we call this, don't call it Berlian Alat Alat Kecil, we call it Belanja Alat Alat Kecil. And it's actually a fixed one. Alat Alat Kecil is meant for the Kilang Sahaja, not for Pejabat. Unless they ask you to split it, then you will split it between Pejabat dengan Kilang. Otherwise, always for Kilang. So the symbol is the B bracket. The squarey bracket. Okay, so that's all. Finish. So now that we're done with the ala ala kecil, then I'm going to start labeling. Yeah? Cut off your tanah dan bangunan. We don't need ABS in our answering. So cut it off. So we have our susun nilai labeled properly already. Angkutan masuk highlighted ones all don't care. Yeah? We look for those that are not highlighted yet. Do you see jualan barang siap? Jualan barang siap is meant for account perdagangan. Okay, AKP. 
Okay, P. Continue. You have belanja penyelenggaraan machine. So I said before, penyelenggaraan means servicing. So this is meant for the machine in your kilang lah, obviously. So it's cost overhead. B in bracket. B in bracket. And now the last two, commission determiner and gaji juru jawa. Usually we will cut it off one. But because this question asks for account untung rugi. So any hasil, any belanja of pejabat, we cannot let go. So you have to label lah. Commission determiner is hasil. Gaji juru jawa is belanja. So if you don't know what is juru jawa, juru jawa is your salesman. So that one's for the officer. Huh? Okay, yeah, so all of them I already labeled properly for you guys. You just need to follow the format that I've given you guys just now from the nota. Okay, that I've written on the nota. If you didn't manage to copy it, no worries. I repeat again, I will put it at my description box for this uh, handwritten notes uh, as PDF. So you can refer and also my answer, I will put it at the description as well. Lah, okay, so that's all for today. I'm so uh, thankful for your attention. So if you guys ever need it again, you can always play back this video. Just, uh, you know, go to a certain timeline lah, okay, where I'm discussing. So box 6 was the beginning and I discussed box 7 towards the end here. So you guys have any questions, can stay and ask me. Otherwise, then I'll see you guys the next time if I ever have live stream again. Okay, all right. Bye-bye. See you guys. Good night. Good luck for your exams tomorrow if you guys are having it, uh, having accounts tomorrow, yeah, then good luck. Hope you guys learn from today. Alright, bye-bye. See you. Bye. Anyone with question can stay, yeah, can ask me. Otherwise, then bye-bye. See you. Bye-bye, <laughs> bye-bye. No worries. Bye bye. <laughs> Ding dong. Bye bye. Bye bye. Good night. See you. Okay. Uh, since I'm a bit delayed lah, so I think you all ask me here also very hard for me to uh. You know, reply. You all can leave me a DM at my Instagram. So I will type my Instagram name at the chat for you guys. If you want to ask me anything, just DM me through there lah. Okay. All right. Bye bye. See you. I'm gonna end it lah. Bye bye. Thank <laughs> you.